<laughs> and we're fucking live. <laughs> Here we go. Again. Miss Jen Fricker. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Thank How? you for having me. What a fucking great pleasure it is to have you here. I'm so stoked. Uh... I love what you guys have done with this place, by the way. This specific is it? This urinal? Yeah, this <laughs> urinal. This specific it's the urinal. best one I've been in so far. <laughs> Definitely the most wine <laughs> I've yeah. ever found in a urinal. <laughs> and I'm always looking. You never <laughs> saw I look. I actually got kicked out of a, uh, a strip club looking for a fucking pinger that I dropped underneath the fucking door and they got kicked out and thrown down the stairs. Mm. Um, and so I'm always looking for cool shit in toilets too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. You and I are like... Uh, Soulmates. Soulmates. <laughs> yeah. Um, I told, she is. <laughs> I told Kenny this uh, when he first asked me if I wanted to be on the pod, but you and I have actually filmed something together before. I think it was the hipsters thing. Was yeah. that what we narrowed it down to? Yeah. So I was shooting a pilot oh, audition I'm, thing. I'm, I'm a drunk. <laughs> so no. My, yeah, so well, my, my memories are... A riddle, like my brain's riddled like cheese. <laughs> so I'm sorry I don't remember no, that. No, 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 it's okay. But it was very funny because it was me auditioning to host some um, documentary about hipsters. I remember this. And then they sent me in uh, to Mary's and we were doing a tasting. But you just took over and were like, we're doing shots and then we'll have a taste. We'll do a shot. And so the whole <laughs> audition is just me getting absolutely fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the job? No. no. I was saying, this my Jake's my fuck to your career. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> we're Fucking the Jake from Mary's. <laughs> Jake 52. Another <laughs> shot. <laughs> well, welcome back to fucking Yay! having a shot world. Hooray. I'm so excited. Should we have a shot? Yeah. You should have a shot. Oh, wait. I'll get it done. Do we have any cups? Yeah. Like okay. shot cups, little cups. And that's why you guys are professionals. Yeah. 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 It's an art. <laughs> getting people, getting half of Sydney drunk is a quite fairly it's talented it's thing. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if you even think about that. How many people that have celebrated birthdays and shit? And you, like, how many people we've got wanked? <laughs> how many people we've got in fights? How many people we've got laid? Like, I don't know. It's pretty how good, I think. How mm. many people we fucked up uh, a career opportunity <laughs> for? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cheers. cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers. Good to be back. <laughs> Beautiful. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's a glorious, glorious time. What's the that tapping is? on the thing before know. you do a shot? I, I know people it. do it. I was actually just, I've already had for quite a few drinks. So I was uh, actually, it was more of like a, I've got to do, I'll do this. <laughs> <laughs> I need ramp for myself. Up. I don't know. I, 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 that, I don't normally do it. I feel like I abstain from that because I just don't get it. It's just it a trend. Mm. So, yeah. I like it, the looking in the eye thing. Yeah. But like it's because you're there to share us a moment with. Generally, you do a shot for a specific reason. It's like a reuniting or something fucking shits happened. Or mm. is that when you do? Or shots? you're auditioning <laughs> for a TV yeah. show? Yeah, yeah. when you're trying to get a job on national television. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. When you're trying to ruin people's careers, you know the same shit. Yeah, well, this is what people don't know. I hate Jen Fricker, mm. uh, and it's been a fucking it's been a five six year period. Yeah. We're just yeah. burning fucking desire to see every element of a career finish, which is yeah. why we've invited you on yeah. this podcast. I can't believe the Oh, is this a nail in the coffin, motherfucker? Yeah. I can't believe the whoopee fishing didn't work. <laughs> Fuck, if there's anyone who's going to get cancelled ever, it's not going to be you. It'll be one of us. Oh. That's for sure. Uh, Cancel ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about this uh, a marching band from America, like a high, university high school band who cancelled themselves <laughs> due to the some sort of, I don't know, lack of diversity or something in, in their history. Mm. But instead of sort of acknowledging the issues and thinking about that and, and trying to, you know, do something better, they just fucking shut it down <laughs> and cancel themselves. They're like, I don't think you guys get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like that's someone on that marching band who was like, I fucking hate doing this. Yeah. How do I get out of Maybe this? Maybe all of them. Yeah, and then all just like scrolling back through everyone's yeah. tweets or something. But yeah. like, one of you guys has to have said something yeah. problematic. I don't want to do Thursday night rehearsals yeah. anymore. Yeah. I've got second, a, yeah. second drummer wore blackface in fucking yeah. 2002. Yeah, yeah. You're fucked, son. Yeah. And we're all out of here. Practice <laughs> right. is cancelled. Just I didn't even do that. Ironic. Well, you did on Illustrator, so you fucking done it. No <laughs> <cut>. <laughs> Ironically, they just marched perfectly out of the fucking practice room. Mm. Yeah. Just ding, ding, yeah. ding. The happiness of not being in a marching band, I know. I know oh, what yeah? it's like. No, I know what it's like to have the happiness of not ever being in a marching band. It would be fucking shite, I'd imagine. Mm, I played French horn for two weeks in year three and it was traumatising. <laughs> fucking hell. I stopped because I almost passed out when I was trying to practice. How does you that just sit happen? Like, 
The French horn is a badass. Is that like the last so instrument cool. left or something? Or <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it really was. Yeah. Even recorder. They were like, <laughs> they were like, we you don't even get a recorder. Jake's wife played a recorder to a high standard. We believe. Yeah, to, for 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 like uh, twelve years. For real. She's like, uh, she did her Amos and oh, B, I think she. Sorry about the smoke. <laughs> I think she did her Bemis in uh, in uh, for all the fucking music wonks out there. Mm. Um, in in <laughs> recorder. I tease her about it all the time. We found a recorder, one of her old recorders. <laughs> and she ref- she's never played it for me. Too I'm fucking right. Yeah, well, they're no. offensive. Oh, well, I would like a good laugh. <laughs> It'd be fucking great to laugh about it. Yeah. Because she can make fart noises as soon as she starts to play. <laughs> 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 this is really funny for me, Al. Huh? It's fucking great. Um, so, Jen, first of all, welcome. Well, a proper welcome to the podcast. Hey. It's a, um, we, well, you're our first comedian on the fucking podcast. We've had some funny people and Kenny and I crack each other up all the time. Mm-hmm. But you're the first comedian. And I've got a fucking bunch of serious questions for the comic. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I want to fucking, awesome. I want to know how somebody gets the f- fucking nerve to stand in front of a group of strangers and mercilessly um, uh, explore their vulnerabilities <laughs> and have and have it pushed out in some sort of a way that's going to benefit the audience yeah. and not them. Um, I Well, I have a joke about it in the show, but basically um, people always say like, wow, it's so brave of you to do that, but it's not. I just get paid lots of money. <laughs> so it's <laughs> like, yeah. uh, it turns out if you <laughs> get paid enough money, you can do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I don't know. I feel like... I agree. Look at Pete Evans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look at that cunt. Oh, my God. He, he's getting paid plenty of money. And look what he does. Yeah. Fucking... Cr- Fucking... Lies for a living. Mm. Oh, I'm but, yeah, I don't know. I think I miss... I have... Um, I, like, growing up, I was so shy and so terrified of being embarrassed. Like, yeah. I, I was always, like, oh, God, and, like, very quiet. And then I started, like, mimicking the funny kids in the class. Like, I wasn't even the class clown. Like, I was a photocopy of the class clown. Yeah. And then um, I, I, just through uni, like, I just – all my favourite people were funny people. And, like, we were all, all hang out at the comedy bar together at uni. And then I just slowly got involved. Did you go to uni here in Sydney? Yeah, just at um, – Sydney Uni, just up the road. So oh, Lans- uh, Lansdowne was our uni bar. Hey. Yeah, so that was a good time. And then uh, Herman's, which is, I don't know if it's still open, but just up the road from here, um, was like so. a comedy room I for the so. uni. So, yeah. It, um, so I used to do the door there. Yeah. I'd just like help with props. And then eventually I just got more and more involved. And then I, uh, all my mates were going to like uh, do the raw comedy competition. And I thought I'd just do it just because I had no expectations. And then I ended up getting to the national finals. And then I got, like, booked for a month of shows off the back of that. And I was like, well, fuck studying art history. Like, yeah, art fuck. history will still be around. And when you <laughs> see, like, like fact, they're, they're building on it. Come yeah, on. exactly, <laughs> right? So I was like, well, I may as well just do it. And if it doesn't work out, let's go back to uni. Yeah. And then it just kind of kept working. So you're, you're a university dropout? Yeah. To, yeah. Good on you. Cheers to that. Cheers, Cheers to I'm that. A, I was a year nine yeah, dropout. That's oh, my for only, real? That's yeah. my only regret is oh, not dropping out of uni, but I, I limped through it. I <laughs> what did you hate study? It. I fucking, like, four things. I had to keep switching so they oh. wouldn't kick me out. Mm. And I just, I enjoyed the life. I'd moved to, I grew up like north of Edinburgh and I moved to Edinburgh and I was just loving it. So I didn't want to, I not want to get kicked out. Well, <laughs> I it. just kept switching classes to like whatever was like the easier one to do. I'm like, yeah. I'll do that then. I'll do that then. Well, yeah. It's like, so your wife is the recorder player. So I studied the con for a bit and I played Playing what? Um, classical double bass. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. So my brother and I both play classical, like orchestral double bass. And then I got into the uni there and I was like playing and I was like I hate this like I don't like playing this why am I doing this so then I moved to main campus it's in uni and yeah like I was saying like all my mates were in the comedy stuff and you get you like the life of it like yeah. you like hanging out and having there's beers nothing better well, I don't, I like I yeah I hated university as a as an overall thing mm. I fucking hated it mm. but it's like but just coming from a small town and getting the to life. move to the city that was what I loved just yeah. like the being there pretty mm. Good. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> smoke weed. If yeah. You smoke weed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking lunchtime. Beer. I mean, to be honest, Kenny and I have now created an entire. Um, this is our life. <laughs> we can have lunchtime beers whenever we want. Yeah, but that's like how I've like parlayed my thing into it's a career success. as well. So I've just taken the best parts of uni, which was hanging out with my friends and like being idiots, and yeah. now I yeah, and now that's my job. 
How did so that fuck when, you, uni. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, fucking dumb down friends. Fuck yeah. you, Sydney uni. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Everyone's studying medicine yeah. and law right now. We don't need you. Suck a dick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you suck said, a medical dick. <laughs> <laughs> penis. Fuck. They're a penis. We used to yeah. do suck a penis. Suck a testes. <laughs> we used to do this thing at school. It's still childish, but it was still very, I still find it very funny. You'd be like in the biology class, you'd be like, yeah, you just like get your meat on the other side of the room. It's like, Turn up page 121 in that book. <laughs> and he's open up his submission of a dick. He's like, ah, you just looked at a dick. <laughs> oh, who's gay? Oh, yeah. you're gay. Yeah, and um, this is when uh, exploring what gay was was fun. Yeah. <laughs> now it's very well established as it's just part of fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I think the dick jokes will never fucking go away. Dick jokes no. are funny. Fart jokes and the whole thing. It's funny watching small kids just like fart and just immediately laugh. Yeah. Like, it's, that just validates it for me. My little boy literally this morning... Uh, we, I changed his nappy and he was refusing to put another nappy on and he just ran around holding his dick stretching it out running around that's a dick joke yeah <laughs> he's two he's exploring dick jokes yeah. right now. <laughs> these are fucking I don't know I, 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 I'm I not sure of what level at comedy you, you'll be able to fill us in well, what level of comedy you have to get to where dick jokes are no longer the the, the lowest common denominator people come in going I expect more from X than dick jokes and mm. then I feel like they're always just there waiting. They're always good. <laughs> it's a universal language. Yeah. It is. Don't yeah, yeah, you yeah. feel? It's a great democratising joke because everyone thinks a dick's funny. No one's mm. like, we have to take dicks seriously. <laughs> no one <laughs> no one in my house must be cherished. My wife calls it a cat's toy. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, I want to bat it away. <laughs> <It's hard. laughs> so Most people on the podcast, yeah, imagine a cat. Hitting a toy. <laughs> pretty, cute. pretty cute. Pretty cute. Yeah, I mean, I, I take Wholesome. it as be, I take it. Yeah, I take it as being cute. I yeah. try not to take offence in the fact that she doesn't take my penis seriously. <laughs> but I'm fucking, you know, who I would? used to have an ex who, who would um, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you the way you shaved your pubes, it's comedy. <laughs> Tell me Sorry. about shaving no, your pubes. I don't shave my pubes. I yet. made that up. I used to shave my pubes. I shaved my balls a, a couple of times. It's so intensely uncomfortable. It's because when they grow back, oh, I think yeah. everyone who shaves pubic hair, like the grow back is not a fucking pleasant experience no. at fucking all. No. So I gave that up in my mid 20s. Yeah. <laughs> I'm old now. Oh. I, there's, there's so much water under that fucking pubes. Sh- <laughs> reading pub bridge. Bridge. Pub bridge. Pub bridge. <laughs> bridge. I'm like, oh, it's fucking fine. In my mind, I'm imagining like the, like, Bridges in Paris where people go and like put a yeah. l- a lock on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just your pubic hair. <laughs> Imagine a, a knot that I made. So my, I braided my pubic, my shaved pubic hair. Actually, uh, uh, you know, this is not about pubic hair, but it's about mm-hmm. a do- a dog's hair. A friend of ours, um, her mum, his mum used to shave their poodles mm. and keep their hair and then fashion it into fucking uh, 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 like scarves. scarves. She made a scarf out of poodle hair. <laughs> fucking weird, right? Yeah. People Shout out to, to Tim <laughs> Webster <laughs> from, the, from the powerful Man and Farms wine. <laughs> yeah, fucking amazing winemaker. But yeah, his mum would make fucking... L- like poodle clothes stuff. out of poodle hair. Oh my god! Well, I guess it's wool, right? Poodle hair is wool. Yeah, no, no, well, it's hair. Dog yeah, dog hair. Dog hair. It's like it's like it's like rat milk. I just feel milk. it's like it'd be h- hard to work with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She like got one of those big yarn yeah. wheel yeah. things. Where a she loom. Like she must have a loom. He can't a loom. Yeah. yeah. I learned that when I went to Harris. They make I was going to say, <laughs> when you went to fucking university. <laughs> <laughs> no. I studied fucking looming. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah, I went to Harris and I was like, what's that thing called? And like, loom. Well, they, yeah, they just shave sheep and turn it into some fashion iconic thing. Mm. Vivian Westwood loves it. Mm. Vivian Westwood is a fucking genius. Mm-hmm. The 1960s. <coughs> Punk. The fashion. The col- she's a fucking <laughs> she's a fucking beast. She is. So I'm a bit fucking. I've Get already had Get a few off. drinks. Yeah. So, so Jen, you've had a fucking almighty uh, year, like all of us, I'd imagine. Yes. What's yes. been happening? We were talking a little bit off on air, off air uh, uh, before we started about mm. where you were meant to be, and it was it was gearing up to be uh, the year <laughs> of Jen Fricker. <laughs> yeah. Year of a yeah year of uh, a lifetime. Yeah. So. At the end of last year, I quit my government job <laughs> and I was like, 
that's it, baby. I'm striking out on my own. I'm going to be a freelancer. 2020 is my year. And I had this big tour planned, was going to go around Australia and to New Zealand. And then the plan was to do like Edinburgh Fringe Festival and Just for Laughs in Montreal. And then eventually settle in LA to <laughs> begin my big new showbiz career. Yeah. And obviously none of that happened. I did one week at Brisbane Comedy Festival. And now you're here in a toilet talking to two fat boys. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's swings and roundabouts. Right? Yeah. <laughs> not that dissimilar from my show. Honestly, <laughs> this is one of the nicest rooms I've performed in. Um, yeah, no, so I did like one week of comedy at Brisbane Comedy Festival and then everything got shut down. And I don't know, like I guess you guys would feel it too. Like I went through like a real period of grief. Like I I think I was just grieving like the life I thought I was going to have this yeah. year. And that took me a really long time to get through it. And then... I don't know. And then I was like, well, like financially I'm, I'm fine. Like for a while anyway, like knock on wood. Right. So I was like, well, I may as well just start fucking around and just making shit just cause I want to. So I've just been, yeah, doing collaborations with people and picking up like different bits and bobs and. And like writing, we've, we've been having this discussion a few times mm. more, more with about um, musicians. Cause that's kind of more in our world. And we said mm. it's first comedian on the, on the show, but um. That idea of uh, artists in this I like time. The fact there's a show now. There's a show, yeah. It's great. Fucking, it's not a TV da, channel. Da, 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 da. I've got a theme tune, right? <laughs> theme tune. <laughs> theme tune. <laughs> um, uh, like the the weight. If you want to be called an artist, or something like the weight that that carries, and if you've been creating and writing within this time, and sort of putting your own stamp on what this time is to mm. talk to talk about it, like to rip the piss out of it later, or whatever the sort of the the strain your comedy might take around it. Is that like is that something that you've you've you felt the need to do? Or you've just you've been doing sort of naturally. Like it's it's I've been a creative been, time. I've just been doing it naturally. I think. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm never one of those people who's like, I've got to do something. Like every day, I must do my pages or whatever. Like, yeah. um, and also when I first started gigging again after COVID, like when things have been slowly reopening, I was like, do people actually want to? talk about it because like it is just so omnipresent so for a while I was like I'm just gonna do dumb jokes that don't really have to do with anything and then for me I just found that that wasn't true to like myself I guess or how I feel about things so yeah I mean mostly my COVID stuff's just um <laughs> just being single in a pandemic is yeah. fucking brutal <laughs> I tell you yeah. there's on the flip side of that being very happily married with two children is fucking brutal <laughs> <laughs> like, is, is anyone happy <laughs> I, you know what I think you seem quite happy I, I know pets. We, I know <laughs> yeah pets are happy pets are fucking stoked yeah <laughs> never, never uh, the, the energy companies are great mm-hmm. <laughs> they're, they're, they're like, yeah. like yeah. everybody Zoom, at home is Zoom it. employees yeah. are like fuck no one knew who we were a year ago now <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're superstars. We're fucking super. Actually, yeah. they're ruining, kind of ruining co- corporate culture. It's not even that good. Mm. I think it's for what it is, it's a pretty shitty version. We got put into that Google Meets thing a couple of times with some Google new, Hangouts, bro. No, it's Google Meets. It's the Hangouts is the old one. They call it Google Meets now. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, whatever. Tech, bro. But it's actually it's, it's actually fucking better. Mm. <laughs> it's better. Mm. It's a, it is a weird fucking thing though. Like the the way that cultures kind of change to like. Uh, the kind of um, it, just because you say it's a Zoom, there's an assumption that everyone can just make it immediately. Yeah, there's a lot less like there's a lot less kind of that goes into arranging a meetup like there is in person. It's like you know, oh, oh the Zoom call, blah blah blah. At X time, and now everyone's like, oh, you can't make it. What the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> you know, you just do it from your car. It's like no, that's kind of. It's. I've got a lot of shit on. There's, there's, yeah. there's used to be around scheduling and organisation. On the flip side, though, it's harder than ever to bail from something, I yeah. feel. Because yeah. people are like, I know you're not doing anything. And you're like, oh, oh I can't make it. Sorry, God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm <laughs> fucking stoned. Yeah. Yeah. I can't Zoom you like this. Fucking and, but, you. If you, but if you ever get onto a Zoom and you're inappropriately dr- – I mean, look, this is not my world. And I'm, I'm going on conversations I had with other friends. You know, I, like, I, uh, I dress the way I fucking dress. I don't give a fuck any day. But that's kind of, like, a part of the glory and joy that I've – one of the proudest things of 
the career I've built for myself, whatever this is, is the <laughs> fact that it's on my terms. And I'm like, I am fucking getting dressed up for anybody. In fact, I feel like there's a little bit of disappointment when people go, he's wearing all of the clothes. <laughs> all the clothes are on him. Uh, like if I wear a jacket in winter, we're like, where's your single? I'm like, it's fucking four degrees, you fucking idiot. Jake, he turned up with a colourful jacket on one day. Like, because he always wears the same outfit every day. He turned up with his colourful jacket on to do this event. Can you call then, me a DJ? Well, no, with this, with the joke was like, hey, Jakey, how's that career as an international DJ? <laughs> <laughs> Just back off the like, fly from Ibiza. Yeah. <laughs> Call How's being in Peking Duck going? It's a hundred percent. I'm it's so good. Now that beautiful fucking you built that world. Oh, that jacket was from. Uh, I bought that back in a jacket in Barcelona. Uh, you know, I was oh, in the Barcelona. Barcelona and Ibiza. <laughs> I was in Barcelona. I bought these two jackets. I wore one of them once, and Kenny teased me mercilessly with oh, that fuck. one joke. No, no with that one joke, it was enough. That's a merciless <laughs> joke. And I was like, oh, I'll just take this off and never That's wear this That's the again. danger of the holiday shop, though. You're like, <laughs> yeah. you, I'd wear that. You, I'd wear that. You're like, oh, I'm like, I'm not restrained by who I was back at home. I'm a new person. I'm <laughs> yeah. a person that wears colourful jackets. Yeah, well, I was <laughs> wearing like Rabbitohs football shorts, like fucking uh, masseurs, mm. and a fucking and at the time, a, like some sort of a weird Hawaiian shirt was split to the to the navel, and I'm a I'm a voluptuous man, and so I was spilling that. Everyone's like, I can wear this. Yeah, you can't everything. You can't. Hey I can't man, wear everything. You can wear anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe yeah. in yourself. Yeah, yeah. That jacket was wearing more. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I expected more from you, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> I expected you to wear it every day from then on. <laughs> Prove us yeah. all wrong. Yeah, just piss you off. I'm becoming an international DJ. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can I can barely work this four channel fucking on and off recording desk, but I can, and that's why we're here. And that's why we're here. That's why we're all here. Yeah. So. A whole bitch, a bunch of shit gets cancelled. Mm. Um, your whole life gets upended, mm. and uh, you know professionally, and you're you're here in Sydney. What did it do to your? I mean, I, I know Kenny's asked this in one way, like, but what has it done in terms of in terms of your writing? It, we kind of covered that, but w- what effect does it have personally about your outlook on? your professional world mm. as a as a great like the role of comedy your role within comedy yeah like well, how's it is it is it like a fucking nothing thing for you you just like making this shit up as you go along like we do most weeks or are you <laughs> like no you've had a real reset and readjustment and you've got a new set of goals it's interesting it's like i think for so long i was like oh i shouldn't do that because like that's not what in my mind like a comedian does yeah but then when everything shut down i was like well comedy like what the fuck am I doing? So I might just try doing a bunch of different shit. So I've just been like more experimental, I guess, in what I do. And then I guess, I don't know, especially being in Sydney as well. Yeah. Like, fuck, I feel so lucky because there are so many better comedians in Melbourne who can't gig at the moment. So yeah. I'm just like, no. <laughs> 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 fuck yes. Um, it's like, Boot yeah. It, boot it, yeah, boot it. Yeah, exactly. I'm <laughs> Sold out shows everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like it's I saw kind you, of you played the sorry uh, you played the opera house in the middle of this. Yeah, yeah. So they do they're doing like a digital season where they're socially distancing. So it's in the opera theater, but it's only which is like a two thousand seat theater, but they only have like a hundred people in it, which is definitely weird. Yeah. Um, but like sick still. It was like the most people I've been in a room with since March or whatever. So I guess I just um, I don't know. You just have to adapt. Like you just have to accept what's happening, and you realize that there is no perfect gig. But then also like comedy is like that. Like I think that's the good thing about doing stand up is you literally start out doing the shittiest pubs. Like I remember one of my first gigs. I was literally doing um, <laughs> a five minute spot underneath the TV playing the NRL Grand Final. <laughs> And it's almost like the, like the yeah. industry is just like, yeah. we hate you so much yeah. and you're just going to fucking have to do this until you get good enough. Exactly. And like, fair enough, honestly. Like, I don't trust people who like comedians, <laughs> who are, like, rev- like who are, you know, reverent to comedians. I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Like, all of these people have a Well, nice way problems. to fucking just diss Kenny and I. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, so I guess I just, you, you are just used to, um, being humbled constantly, right? Yeah. Like you and yeah, comedy is is I guess like technically an art form, but like no one treats it like that. It's not like we're dancers. Or like uh, we fucking love it. Like it's oh well, yeah. But le- well, the level of in- the intelligence and sort of social commentary, and it, and it's 
uh, one, of the, good, one of the it's... one of the few avenues that can cut uh, through all the bullshit mm. and joke about you know make jokes or make light of the really serious things mm. like it's you know for that reason when when we're in a, such a culture now of no one wants to see her do the wrong thing. Mm. Like comedy is a real, we've turned to it a lot, I think, in this time. Yeah, I think just so. Just to sort of like, That's you so. know, like Dave Chappelle is probably a, who he loves the most right now. Just oh, to sort of, yeah. he, like the way he can just cut through, he's like the one that refuses to be called out. Like yeah. You're calling everything out and you fucking try and call me out. Mm. <laughs> and it's, it's, an, it's an interesting like social statement to sort of watch. And like, yeah, I mean, I think that there's just no pretension. It's not like you have to create like a, an artifice of like character or, or sound and like kind of big yeah. kind of tricks. Like you literally just get up and if you have a microphone that works, that's good. But <laughs> again, like I've played- if the TV's off, it's yeah. even better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like anytime there's not a TV playing during the back of my set, I'm like, wow. <laughs> I, was, I, I just imagine- I brought a TV <laughs> with me if you want to <laughs> <should I> put <laughs> it on. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's just funny. It's like anytime I get my own- like dressing room i'm like this is fucking insane <laughs> like i'm so used to just being in a fire like staircase yeah you know what i mean there's in no toilet. yeah <laughs> and so if you're a dick and in comedy like you are easily found out like yeah. if you can't if you show up to gigs and you're like i should be here i should be getting paid or like why am i on this with you like you just like no one will buy into what you do or you just kind yeah. of you're never fucking good is, I is, guess if is, you if you're bringing in that much kind of attitude, yeah, is mm. is vulnerability the most important thing in comedy? Like that that's always going to win out over a manicured, like a fucking Jerry Seinfeld who yeah. shows no vulnerability. He's, he's so arrogant. Like, I mean, <laughs> he's not funny. He's, he he like he needs to go down. I think you know my limited understanding of what comedy is as you can't have a conversation around great the great comedians without Jerry being a, a reasonable fucking person you can put forward. Mm. Yeah. Whether or not he ends up on, on your list, you know, if it's five, ten, whatever it is, maybe the but he's pretty fucking genius with his writing. But as a fucking human, that guy can fucking eat one. Yeah. <laughs> he is not ple- and his comedy has just gotten more and more it's gotten cleverer and cleverer and the like, humanity's just dropped out. Yeah. It's just all around this fucking game he plays with in his head. Yeah. I mean I will say like um, comedians are like vampires where the longer they spend together, the less humanity they have. <laughs> <laughs> um, but why is that? Because I mean, that's, I, I rec- I feel like there's like, because they just get, they push each other. You guys push each other to a point, like outside of the realms of regular convention and conversation. Like they you know, it's pretty classic within the stand up um, world that I've, I've witnessed online and, and is mostly, this this world in which it's just endless ribbing, yeah, and endless piss taking, and that and one upmanship and just taking the shit. So I mean, at some point, you just got to either harden up or just you know just you have no boundaries. Yeah, and there are definitely some comics who are just not about that at all, and you also respect that. Like I, I know um, a few people who like are just like, yeah, I don't I don't need to do that whole like yeah. competitive thing and the fucking over stuff, but. I mean, it's fun. Like it's comedy. about like comedy is a much is I feel like as much about being on stage as it is about the hang backstage. Yeah. And when you're on like a really good fucking lineup or tour or whatever, it doesn't really matter yeah. how well it goes or or whatever. Like you can start fucking with each other, with the audience, with yourself, and you have like a kind of. Um, team behind you supporting you and being yeah. like, yeah, fucking go for it. Take risks and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's like this kind of little microcosm, its own it, like yeah, ecosystem. It feels like the, the community around it, and I'm basing this on, well, one, understanding that people do comedy and get into that world of certain frame of mind. Two, Joe Rogan. <laughs> just, <laughs> but just talking about like his sort of stories about that community of comedians and it's like he's like it's just fucking different. It's just like yeah. just you can go on you go to LA and you can hang out and be like you'll be the actors over there, the musicians over there, and the comedians over there. Mm. Like they're like they are but probably more humble, more just like how the fuck did I get here? Yeah, well <laughs> like, that's it. It's like none of us take it like none of us feel entitled to it, none of us take yeah. it seriously. All of us realise like all we are doing is just trying to like elicit laughs from people. Whereas I feel yeah. like actors are trying to like create a world and artists yeah. are trying to speak to some kind of truth or whatever. Whereas comedians are like, I'm here just to like yeah. fuck around and make people laugh. And, and I'd, like I'd imagine, I'd imagine that in that sort of com- comedic community, that sometimes the comedy can get so dark and that's when you're like, 
fuck, if only people knew what we're really yes. like. <laughs> yes. That's the thing as well. Like it's just the shit that we say to each other that isn't on stage is – one like every comic sh- comedy should be cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> Frankly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the things that have been said by comedians uh, yeah. when no one is listening. But that's also where I love it because it's just like you're just constantly like, how can I get away with this? How can I? Whether it is something that's like extremely uh, obscure or absurd or so fucked yeah. up, it's just like how can I? First of all, like say this in a way that will get people to laugh and come with me on it. And yes. second of all... And that's like the artistry, the nuance of like the delivery, the timing, the tone, mm. like a little turn at the end, whatever it is, just to turn into something. You could have... you could, Like great comedians have lost the audience like halfway through a joke and then fucking get them all back in like one word. Well, yeah, I was listening to this um, podcast with one of my favourite comics, um, Rory Scovel, who's like an American comedian, and he does kind of a lot of like um, conceptual stuff and whatever, but he was saying that um, the thing about comedy is like you just cannot be afraid to fail. Yeah. And then like if you accept that failure is just part of it, like you will lose audiences sometimes all the time or you will gig in the opera house one day and then underneath the tv the next day like it's just (laughs) you're like when you accept that then it becomes so freeing because then you can just literally say anything and if people aren't into it then you're like well there'll be a next one or like well i can just bail myself out with this joke or i can fuck with the audience and become antagonistic which then turns into a joke like yeah i don't know i just it is like a game for yourself it's for like a game for the audience and yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm s- I'm trying to like make it sound like such a noble art, but it's just no, it's well, funny. I think it like, is really noble. I'm talking about, it. I think it is. We, like it's we like, we've, yeah. we've spoken about it a lot uh, personally. We I think there's it's anyone who says there hasn't been a a resurgence or a, you know a renaissance, you know a thirty year gap of renaissance. Hmm. You know the renaissance is there after the fucking three four hundred year dark ages, but what? <laughs> yeah. But you know there has been a renaissance of comedy, and you know out on the answer, you know of 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 Pryor and 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 um, Eddie Murphy and George Carlin. Now we have you know the Dave Chappelle's and the Hannah Gadsby's and this whole podcast network that's mm. kind of come up and plus what's going on on YouTube, like yeah, and, the, and Instagram, like that's its own flavor of comedy now. Yeah, huge. And it's like sick because yeah, you literally just need. A phone, and you can start. Yeah, like making but I think it's it's artistry lies in it's the people's need and want for it in those those darker times, mm. which we were kind of already going through. Like you know, yeah, globally, life's been pretty complicated for the, the last pandemics. five years. It's, yeah, know, it's like you can listen it's to a an upbeat on. song, you know, pick your mid up for a bit. But when you listen to people, you know, make light of the shit that's going on. Mm. Like there's a real place in culture for that. Yeah. Well, it's an acknowledge. Sorry to jump in there. It's, I just, because I've I been, this, this was leading into a question I was, I was leading into. Is it, it's. I'm going to talk myself up. The, the, like I feel like the music industry and the wider arts community has really not done their fucking job in the previous 15 odd years and how so i feel like they've not been able to challenge challenging ideas Mm -hmm. in a in an an intelligent way Mm. you know music i feel like it's rare it's a rare band that's really stepping in and commenting on what's happening and 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 putting forward like a an emotional statement Mm. like nirvana uh, one of the last great bands to do that within a, a time with uh, within certain contexts, there's a lot happening in the hip hop world right yeah. now. But cult, but cult, like globally, culturally, mm. there's a it's it's not having the same effect that comedy is. Comedy se- is seeming to cut cross boundaries in a way that music's not, and s- especially you know movies. Um, uh, and uh, the wider like visual arts culture, it, it's it. They seem to be speaking inwardly, yeah. not uh, not cross culturally. Yeah. Not not. And when I say cro- culturally, I mean like cross uh, cross artistic lines. I think what it is is that um, with comedy, you can still laugh at someone who you don't like. You know what I mean? And you disagree with? Yeah, you can disagree with someone. You can go like, I never want to run into this person mm. on the street, but you can still enjoy what they're saying. You can still laugh at what they're saying because like you understand That's what it's designed for. Yeah. But I think with music and stuff and definitely something I saw at Triple J is 
people are really scared to take risks to yeah. alienate people. Well, this is where the point. it's like all of the bands that we love, like your Nirvanas and it, like everything, like are all the people who are going like, I don't care if you don't like me because it's not actually about you liking me. It's about me saying something that is meaningful. Like um, what's going on with like One Four at the moment? Um, they're a hip hop crew out of Western Sydney. Yeah, love them. Yeah. We've had they're them play this great. stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're fucking we had, we had amazing. To, we had to do it without announcing them. <coughs> Excuse oh me, yeah, cause because they keep getting fucking shut down. Yeah. Every yeah, single time, every just, gig they've play, the tried to play, the and cops, they could only play for like fifteen minutes. The, the yeah. cops, the cops would call up to, or come, not call up, come and visit the venue. And go, we're seeing that you're going to play the Oxford Art Factory. Mm. So they played here the night they were meant to play the Oxford Arts, and the Oxford Arts got bullied by the Oxford by the by the police to get rid of mm. it, which is fucking, it, it's bullshit. But like they're essentially our equivalent. Of NWA at the moment, you know, yeah. because they are getting targeted by the police because they are speaking to. Which an is why audience. they got a spot on a stage and knowing. <laughs> that, I mean, we're our whole fucking livelihoods are locked up on the line and playing bands like that. It wasn't an easy thing for us to go. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, because that's our fucking kids' money. Yeah, that, that's that's the money we. Put it's it. your legacy. It's not. It's our legacy. It's our fucking paycheck. It's mm. the way we put we feed our children, but you know, you know, uh, you acknowledge something there that. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's fucking. N- I've NWA was literally the band that I said to all the stuff like, "Look, this is it. This is an mm. opportunity. Why are we going to put this on? Because this is a moment. It's yeah. not. It's not a global moment like NWA managed to to uh, engage with. But at the same time, like it's in our backyard, and these bands, you know, not having a fucking stage because of whatever reason mm. is. Uh, to, for public safety, it's, it's it's insane. Yeah, because they're speaking to people again. It's 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 like almost punk in its purest form. It's yeah, like we're sure. not trying to like sell records. We're literally just making shit that is personal and truthful, and clearly it's resounding with an audience. It's just not yeah. the audience that the police are particularly comfortable with. Yeah, and that's and that whole shitstorm they create around it, like as in the the police and the media. Just like hypes that up, like it's they would do a show. Like half of the it, like by a doing that, it encourages that sort of en- encourages shit to go down. Where it's like if they just fucking played a show. We had little Spacey coming to empty rooms, and he was fucking so beautiful mm. and so loving. He was he was talking about the same thing. He's like, how are we meant to sort of you know talk about this culture that's like that means something to Sydney the whole fucking like the government everyone's saying yeah it does mean something you got you have a voice and yet they keep telling us to shut the fuck up yeah like they keep cancelling the shows they keep te- like they literally literally strong arm in the venues mm. to say here's a list of bands that cannot play here like, and for what like yeah. nothing's even happened yet who are yet. they protecting it's, it's like nothing's even happened yet mm. like, you know what I mean like it's it's in, it's insane and well it's what what are they protecting you know like uh, you know the who is you know can be managed by any police department but you know, I, I think that that's just completely beside the point to be honest it's what are they protecting mm. they're protecting a fucking they're, 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 they're saying that they're protecting public order but th- you know, it's actually what they, these, these people are saying, which is the most powerful thing. It's not the fact that you might get two crews from Western Sydney rocking up and having a fucking fight. Yeah. That's not a concern to any fucking police department in the fucking world. You know, a couple of fucking kids, like, doing bad shit, then it's not, it's, that's not appropriate, but that's not what they're concerned about. Mm. The messaging uh, that I take away from specifically what's happening in Western Sydney is that there is... It, there is a fundamental lack of um, uh, quality from west from from the eastern suburbs mm. to the western suburbs, mm. and they talk about it, and they're realistic about it. And some have been some have been in fucking juvie, some are in jail right now, and they they're raising questions around why are we here? Yeah, like I don't feel fucking like I have another option other than to behave like this and this is why. And these these voices are so powerful and we shut we do shut them down. Like we had a little space there and we're like, how crazy is it? You've been on fucking you were on Beats One before you're on Triple J. Yeah. How is this possible? You're fucking on Beats One, <laughs> Apple Beats One, <laughs> rather than Triple J. And I know Triple J is uh. a, a fucking pet, uh, well, not a pet thing, like a real thing for you. But, you know, that's, that's <laughs> a, when I said that to him in, the, in this podcast, it's like, that's a fucking crazy moment we need to acknowledge. Forget, like, yeah. and you don't need to forget anything, like, but, like. 
Oh, I don't Forget know if you know, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> a triple J doesn't like me anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always get in Look, trouble when I talk about them. But we're not, we're not in the fucking. Well, first of all, you got four fucking letter rights, so let's just fucking talk. <laughs> Second thing is, we're no longer target market anyway. We're thirty eight and thirty nine, so whatever. Yeah, they, they you lost this three and four years ago, man. <laughs> um, but I was look, never a big fan anyway. And I got I when I moved to Australia, there was like, oh, triple J, triple J, triple J. I was like, I haven't had a good song yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 an indictment on the fact that, or you know, that the the important voice, some of the most important voices in in culture come from our young people mm. and they come from the artistic communities we we firmly believe that the arts reflect back what's happening in our wider culture and when when bands when when any artists fucking make people upset i can guarantee you something's happening yeah they're, that's they're it. pushing buttons and, and they may not always be right and they may not they, even if they're right a fucking tenth of the time it doesn't matter. Like, it's still right a tenth of the time. Well, this is the thing, right? Like, I like art is meant to have a visceral response to it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and TV snacks. <laughs> no, no, it's ice. <laughs> the ice oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. So, like, I, I remember <laughs> these were the conversations that we would always have at Triple J, which was like, who are we pitching to? Are we pitching to people who just have it on in the background at work and that kind of thing? Are we pitching it to people who are thirsty for like new Australian music or whatever. Are we pitching it to people who want to know like what the wider global music scene is? Yeah. And so often it was like, well, if we get negative texts about this song, we probably shouldn't play it or like blah, 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 blah. And I think as I went on, I just was like, no, like I'm just going to play stuff that like resonates with me. Did you get, did you get control? Yeah, so like uh, I was quite lucky at the show that I was on because I was part of the music library like meetings and stuff. So like we got to chat about um, what albums were going to feature and, and also we would go and be like, hey, I heard this song on like SoundCloud and mm-hmm. I want to get, I want to play this song or whatever and, and that kind of thing. So there was a bit of leeway for sure. Um, but yeah, I just remember like people were very afraid. Like I remember um, we had, oh, What's the name? Slim Set on um, my show. Uh, and they're like super dope DJ duo out of um, Western Sydney again. And they've played here a couple of times. Yeah, and they're sick dudes. Like and they and they I feel like a part of something at the moment that like needs to be heard. But because it's different, because people aren't used to hearing Australian accents on the radio, like in like kind of hip hop music or whatever. I, it got it got so much hate and I just remember someone coming up to me afterwards and being like, oh, well, we'll never do that again. And I was like, well, no, like it's getting hate because it's new. It's getting hate because it's got a strong response. Yeah. And it doesn't undo that like what they're doing is like great and important and sick. Like just because some one, two, three people don't like it doesn't mean that we shouldn't have it on. And I some think of the greatest pop music of all time got a fucking stream of hate when it came out. You know what I mean? Like exactly. Ma- Madonna got hate. Like yeah. Just from like going I semi, not even semi naked or whatever. Like and it's like 80s. how do you sustain growth then in the artistic community? Because like no yeah, one comes Bob out exactly. perfect. Bob Dylan goes from fucking, you know, goes electric. Yeah. And then writes some of the fucking greatest albums of all time and mm. people are like, well, my 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 people don't like it. He's like, I don't f- people. I don't yeah. f- imagine yeah. Twitter existed then. Fuck, dude. exactly. You got fucking Who does this guy well, think he is? <laughs> yeah, I you. came to the folk festival to listen to some gentle acoustic. <laughs> 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 it's just like everything that's important is fought for. I feel. Yeah, I, and art, yeah. Ad, art's designed, I think, to agitate. And it's not going to go think away. The, the best, the best form of of agitation currently. The clearest forms of agitation are, are for me, are fermented um, in in stand up. Mm. You know, like he, there's the power of and the intelligence of of uh, Hanny Gadsby stand up set, and then the complete opposite fucking uh, like stylistically and message wise in some ways with Dave Chappelle. Like they they clash on fucking topics here mm. so clearly mm. and yet you can't fucking walk away because they've both managed it so masterfully. Mm. You would imagine that those two people sitting in the fucking at a fucking – they would get on. Yeah. They would have a lot to talk about and that because they've done such an intelligent job of delivering it to people. Now that's not that, – I mean these are two 
you know, geniuses of our time, especially in the stand-up world. But, you know, I don't see that reflected in the visual arts. I don't mm. see it reflected in cinema right now. I don't see it reflected in music. I can't tell you that the last band and the last album that was like, that, that was like really just shook the fucking world. Like Kendrick Lamar. Like let's like his music is is so incredibly powerful and and there's a lot of powerful music happening, but as a fucking like a global movement where everyone's standing up and, because it's so good, mm. it is so powerful. That's like and and maybe the platforms are fucking loving it too. I don't know what else has gone in behind it, but it seems to be something about stand up comedy that's undeniably the voice of the last. You know, it's two just, years. Yeah. It's combative. I feel it's like combative in its nature to, like it's it's already out there. You know what I mean? Like it's you can't like, like that idea is like well, we'll just stop playing the songs. It's like it's already out there. Well, as soon as like as soon as it, like a comedians put a show out, it's fucking out there. You can't stop it. So it's going to yeah. trickle through. Whereas like the people in the in, in the power of the music industry. They just fucking they they hush it down. You know, There's something I mean? going like, on. I think it. is also as well like because all of comedy, like stand up comedy, is so transient. It is that idea that it ends when it ends. Like no matter what happens, you're like hour ends and that's yeah. it. So <laughs> you can do whatever the fuck you want, and then it gets washed away like a sand castle on the yeah. beach. You know what I mean? So that's there true. is something inherently dangerous about it, or at least like. Um, uh, yeah, like careless in a way because you're like yeah. within this little sandbox that I've got, I'm just going to fuck around for an hour and that's it. Whereas I understand with musicians, like they've got to sell, like they're on an album cycle or they're trying to get signed it's to It's been this, so commodified. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Yeah. And it's it must be really hard. Like it must be hard to be like, um, hey, you want to get to this level? Well, you have to leapfrog yeah. from this to this to this to this. Whereas yeah, with stand-up, it's like you can achieve success without being – on Netflix. Like, yeah. I consider myself a, a successful comedian because I get to pay my rent with comedy. Like, yeah, exactly. And that was always the goal. It was never like, I want to be the most... It's a big tick. Yeah, and it's huge. Like, I'm it's very huge. fucking lucky. Um, but, uh, you know, so I consider myself quite lucky. But then, yeah, if I was a musician, I guess you're always kind of going like, how do I grow this? Yeah. And, like, having fucking touring taking away this year would be fucking yeah. devastating and... It's so yeah. huge, and what it like? Cause I was I was gonna ask that, and you sort of touched on it there. Like we we, we quite often use the the album analogy is for shit that we do, like as in you know this is kind of like the second album. The second album can't fucking suck. The second album sucks. You're fucking one hit wonder. If the second album is better than the first album, you're gonna have a bit of longevity. Like mm. just with the sort of segment parts of a like like venue wise in that. So as like as a comedian, like do. You, when you have a show, or you you do a show and you tour a show. Mm -hmm. Is that is a is a material that lives on? Like for example, like all the material you're about to tour mm. that is that not been toured, does that get binned or does it get reincarnated or does it sort of like how do, is it just a, a living organism that just might melt into f years from now or yeah. like what's but how does it how do you how do you write or sort of compartmentalize like. The shows, I suppose. Or yeah, I mean, um, I think the thing about doing like a festival show is that by the end of a festival run, you've done the same material. Because you've got to name it and stuff. It's like an album. Yeah, yeah, you've got to yeah. give it a name. You've done it 200 times. So by the end of it, you're like, I fucking never want to yeah, do yeah. this again. I never want to say it again. I want to write something new. But then on the flip side, like with this year, I wrote this show. I'd spent like a couple of years writing it. I brought in a director and all this shit. And then when it got canned um at first i was really upset but then i was like but also i was going to do a new show next year anyway yeah so maybe it just grows into something else like it it's it's um and even show to show like you can do the same show for a week at a festival and it will be different every single night because yeah. you just find new beats and maybe someone in the audience says this or you f you find something new every time so yeah like it's very hard to do the same show twice yeah um so, yeah, I feel like, again, it's very freeing. Like, really, all that is um, constricting you is that hour period and yeah. that's it. And you have, like, a you have your flow of the show and, and that kind of thing. But you kind of live or, like, what you um, enjoy about it is the way that it transforms. Yeah. Um, and I know so many comics who are, like, 
I do this, then I do this. At this minute mark, I hit this note and then I do this and that. But they're still like fucking around with it because like yeah. that's the only way you can stay in it. You can see when comedians are checked out. You can see when comedians are like, but then I say this, then I wait for applause and blah, 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 blah. And, and that's not compelling to watch. It must be no. fucking great to watch somebody behaving like that and then when they were expecting a laugh and getting nothing. Mm. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of empathy when, or, the, or like when, when someone's just bombing on stage, but when someone's just expecting it mm. and they yeah. just stop mm. and they're like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> you didn't work hard enough. My favourite is when you see like established comedians, like the like older kind of generation of comedians come on and they're like, I'm going to do my jokes about blah, blah, blah. And then they get absolutely shown up by like an open micer who's like, I'm going to fucking. I'm going to go for it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to, because I'm going to, because I, I want this. It's not, you know, it's not paying yeah. my mortgage. So It's ripping a off a band. That, like I think vulnerability is so key to any art. Mm. The successful transmission of a, an individual and fresh a new idea to any large group of people, whether it, uh, we've, we've seen it, you know, it just, we've seen the, when I acknowledge the role of vulnerability in, in operating venue, hospitality venues, it's key and core. I always has Talk been. me through that because I feel <clears throat> like what you guys do is very personal in a way. So but personal. Yeah. And, it's built and I feel like you guys have really built on being like, we are Mary's group. This is what we're about. And like, that's what you're going to find in yeah. each venue. Yeah. How did you find that? Like, how did we found you go? each other. Oh. <laughs> and it was how did you meet? Can I? In Edinburgh, have you, yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, like 2005? 2005, yeah. 2005, yeah 2005. They're all traveling. My and my wife, Amy, you know, Cherry Moon, mm-hmm. and Jake and Ali, they, they were traveling separately. They'd met. In London, I think, and no, they met here. They they no, had the same circle. I never no, met. No, you and Ali had met in oh, London, right, but yeah. everyone went traveling separately. Uh, Amy had come over. Amy knew Ali from here, and ended up sleeping on their couch in Edinburgh. Um, fucking yeah, Dossa. It was all just sort of everyone just moved. Fucking Dossa. We just met through the the bar the bar industry. Jake yeah. and I was gone, and we found yeah. each other. Yeah. And but you know, to answer your question, I think you know, like. Uh, the core of it was we found uh, we found a, a a soft space where we could literally be vulnerable and talk about things. And our famous, and like we've spoken about this a lot, but we bonded over our mutual hatred of the industry. Yeah, we wanted to be we, we wanted to be in that. its face because it was we love our it industry. It was like early, but it's early mid shite. Early mid two thousands was like that whole hospitality was like. Black pants, black shirts, like black. Now aprons, it's fucking like leather jerkins like and fucking you know mixologists. Like, when, fuck yourself. You know when every More, bar, um, every bar like played music that no fucker ever, ever listened, listened to at yes. home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, yeah. what the what fuck's playing shit? Out? Like, yeah. no one, no one goes up to the bar. And is like, oh, what is still, this fucking? Eighty like, percent of restaurants still do that now. Yeah, mm. they don't listen to the music that the fucking people who work there want to listen to. Mm. Like, fuck, what are you talking about? They, the music needs to reflect. And you know what? There's probably a few Mary's venues now where the staff are like, I'm so fucking sick of listening to Queens at this and age and fucking, you know, Lil Wayne. But fuck, you know, like... Well, we, we encourage that evolution of it. Like, that yeah. was... that When Mary's opened in 2013... But the point is the guests, that was, the guests are there for a reason. They, yeah. they feel comfortable. And again, mm. and it's... But it's... It was, it was what we were doing at the time. We were at same company, different venues, and we were living together. So we'd get pissed. We'd go to the pub after work, get pissed, come home, drink... Everything in the fucking cupboard. <laughs> like, the drunker we got, the heavier the music got. Mm. We'd get McDonald's and Ubers. or ta- Uber probably didn't exist then. No. We'd get taxis. We'd get, ma- we'd get KFC and McDonald's so on the like, way home. And we just... So but that's... Yeah, Mary's for us is like that experience with people that give a just fuck. everything we did. It's like, you get yeah. McDonald's in the bar. Imagine you're getting hammered. You're like, <laughs> that's get McDonald's yeah. in the bar. Is this, is, this is it. It was Mary's at McDonald's like, and We KFC. don't have to get a taxi there anymore. <laughs> before, <laughs> before it closes, we don't have to go for a fancy meal or uh, yeah. I'll sit listening to some fucking cocktail bartender mm. tell me the fucking back history to the fucking martini. I'm not interested. Yeah. I've known that. This is my life. This is what I've done. I know all of it. I'm sick of getting this fucking shit. And if I'm sick of it and this is mm. what I do, mm. Then I have no. We we. I know the way that everybody else in the fucking room feels. They they're not interested. They're here yeah. to hang out with their fucking girlfriend or hang out with or, or get hammered with their mm. mates or just sit by themselves and meet somebody. Yeah. And instead, you've got some fucking diatribe just hitting you in the face. This narrative that's uninteresting to anyone other than the operators for whatever reason. And we. 
yeah, we literally bonded over our mutual hatred, yeah. but knowing that there was there was still something that burned within us for the industry. Well, yeah, I mean, it, what it sounds like is you saw the truth of how people socialize in these spaces, which is yeah. you're not there well, to like wank yourself off by being like, well, I've ordered this drink, blah, blah, blah. You're there because you want to be with your friends, you want to get a bit fucked up and you want to eat this like yeah. greasy food. And, but, and more specifically, it was just entirely what we wanted. Mm. Like, but we feel we were pretty good judges of, you know, we, had, you know, we were likable people. We were fun to be around. We were like, fuck, no, this is going to be fucking fun as fuck. All that. We used to be. <laughs> we were yeah. fun. <laughs> we were <laughs> people, like, and it was so much fun when, you know, at Mary's and people would come up and be like, can I, can I talk to the manager? And I'd be like, oh, the, it'd be me or Jake and be like, oh, they're not here right now, but what, what do you got to say? <laughs> and then they'd be like, just, you know, I just think, you know, it's, I like this place, but did point out a few things wrong. And then it was really, it was so empowering and so freeing just to, and never be mean about it and mm. just say, you know what, I really appreciate your opinion you have to understand that this place was put together for many different reasons than for your precise pleasure right now. Mm. And you don't have to be here. You don't have to come here anymore. We're not asking you to come back. But it's going to be like your, this next appreciate, time. Yeah. Appre- appreciate your option but it's, or your opinion, but it's, it's going to be exactly like this. Maybe even louder because yeah. we, the point of it being loud is you have to fucking speak up. It, yeah. That whole idea of being shy, it's, it encourages you as a person to fucking to shout for a second and mm. just be like, Fuck! I actually, I've got to give some energy to this mm. venue to get the most out of it. Yeah. So that was it was always about. So anyone that complained like about the fucking expensive natural wine that you couldn't fucking get anywhere else, or the fact that it was too loud, mm. we were very polite about saying we'd have to come back. And anyone that was really it's rude, nice polite, fuck and, off. <laughs> and anyone that was rude, we had the real privilege of going upstairs and be like, "So, turns out you've been really fucking rude to the staff tonight. There's no bill." Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And they're like, are you joking? It was like, no, I'm not no. joking. You get the fuck out of here right and now. And that's Who why it fucking works because you're not going, we need to satisfy everything. Fuck that. You can't. You're going, you can't. You and cannot, also yeah. you're not flinching in the face of people being like, oh, this isn't for me. Like you've, you've created the something that's not for me. For them? I feel like so many people think everything is for them and that's like... Or that their opinion matters. Yeah, and like that's with comedy. Like people will come up afterwards and be like, I loved what you were talking about but I think that you should do X, Y, Z. And it's like, cool, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing because I've been doing it for 10 years and it works. Like I appreciate that you've come and you've invested in this show but also like... I I did this show knowing that it wasn't for yeah. everyone. And also but thank you for fucking kindling my, f- like stalking my fires because I want to upset people. <laughs> <laughs> like to yeah, a degree, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to upset, oh, I don't want to upset everyone. But as soon as I kind of realised in my comedy, like, oh, I don't need to make everyone in the room fucking like me. Yeah. I can just make That's the freedom. This That's section. the step, isn't it? Yeah. When, can you remember and when that happened? <laughs> I like, really do. I remember it was at Splendour in the Grass and it was like, Oh, fuck. Or maybe some other festival. But I remember Greg Fleet was saying, like, I noticed that women really laugh hard during your sets. And I was like, yeah, I guess they do. Because, and it must be weird as a male comic because you're so used to hearing male laughs and then hearing women laugh at something and really, like, openly laugh. Yeah. I was like, fuck, yeah, I don't have to be for everyone. But on the flip side, men come along on the ride because they're like, Oh, well, there must be something truthful in this or they can acknowledge mm. it. Like, I yeah. just feel like just everything, fucking learning something. everything good is about truth and it's about vulnerability, whether it's a bar or it's about, like, just getting up and being a dickhead for 10 minutes. This is something yeah. I wanted to talk I wanted to, talk to you about. And mm. it's – because I, I've – within your, um, your, your life, mm-hmm. there's, there's, a, there's a very clear – uh, line of you've been very open around calling people out for um, you know uh, your your take on on an ex- on experience and, and calling them out and and trying to I, I you know I I see it as a, a request to make people better, mm. but at the same time you live within this profession that is literally about the the opposite and it's kind of like about taking the piss out of it yeah and and exploring vulnerabilities and ideas that are very deeply uncomfortable i think we we already spoke about hannah gadsby and Mm. Chappelle, like living at these two very opposite ends but ultimately i I think giving very positive messages yeah but it's it's a 
for me, when I was, I was, you know, when when we like nailed you to get to, to come and sit on this fucking podcast of mm-hmm. sixteen people, <laughs> it's like <laughs> right, I'm gonna fucking really do some research and we're gonna go back and and listen to the stand up and mm. and and see where you've come from. And there's a really clear this. It's an uncomfortable kind of space that that, that exists between the stand up world mm. and this and and this other world of where you've you've called people to account for things and it i just i'm i'm really intrigued by the space that it takes to kind of acknowledge both i i know that both exist mm. and that this is the complexity of human the human experience yeah. it's 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 meant to be complex. Nothing's As meant to be simple. I'm a piece of shit on stage, but then I try and set an example off stage. The the fact that you you acknowledge the fact that that it's meant to be that com- your art form is meant to be irreverent, mm. and then and and challenge ideas, mm. and then you're challenging some ideas that that are different off stage. And I just there's a tension there, and I like I I I mean. I'm really I'm fascinated by how you ride that life for yourself, like how yeah. where you put certain things. So, you know, you're sitting backstage and you, you know talking about all this shit, but where does it land in that space? And it's that it's different in another. Yeah, you know, like I don't know uh, quite what. Well, I suppose the question is uh, how how difficult is it for you to to navigate both, and is there a singularity where it fits for you that makes perfect sense? I mean, yeah, I mean, for me, it does make perfect sense, like all of it, um, because in my writing or in whatever the fuck else I'm doing, um, I just feel like I know who I am and I have my own set of core values. But then I also acknowledge like there is a inherent hypocrisy in being a person. Yeah. And I feel like the times oh, that I've... that's a nice term. Yeah, right? I like that. Like that's you, great. N- I mean... Uh, a better and more simple way to put it is nobody is perfect, right? Mm. So I feel like every time I've kind of gone after someone, it's never because they, you know, it's just me being like, I feel like I'm going to be about this today. It's always been, you need, uh, it's always been against institutions or people that present themselves as perfect. Yes. And I feel like that's what my stand-up is about okay. as well. All right, okay. So, so like, see, this is a point that I think is, uh, yeah, okay, I'm with you. Because I, I feel like it. stand-up, the best stand-up is about the nuance of living or yeah. or the complexity of it and about the good and the bad and the hypocrisy and how we have an image of ourselves, but then also there is a reality of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like it's very easy for me to then point that out in other things. Yeah. And sometimes... Maybe I don't do it the best way or whatever, or maybe I'm pointing out to people who aren't ready to hear that, or mm. you know, they ride upon the idea that they have to be perfect and that everything they do is sanctioned and safe. But again, it's like nothing good is safe, nothing good is appealing to everyone. That's such a great that nothing appealing is safe is a really fucking great that, that resonates really deeply with me because I, I like. I'm a white straight man. <laughs> there's a yuck. lot, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of messaging out there that says that I am also yuck bald. And, and that I'm a bald lot of from the <laughs> bald from the. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, oh wow! Yeah, no, like I know. I really thought the, you would like have carried a dolphin. Down. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. nothing. No, I'm a dolphin. Hell yeah. Because I'm the opposite. <laughs> I'm like a fucking bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Um, but you know, like it's 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 a it's an interesting space to sit in as somebody who's uh, we've been really investing in culture and and community for a long time, and you know, and then the messaging currently, especially in the space that I've been most most comfortable, you know, we will call it a work space, you know, mm. like you know, it all of a sudden things shift, and there's a lot of fucking conversations that we've taken for granted, and and they've been just lumped on our doorstep in a very confrontational way, mm. and. You know, oh, fuck. I agree with the fact that it's happening. Mm. And any life that is unexamined, that is unchallenged, is one that is useless mm. and pointless and without fucking. It's without merit. Mm. I really believe that being pushed and uh, to to challenge yeah. things is is literally at the heart of what it is to be a human. And and yet at the same time, like I 
I'm a, I'm a human and I, I feel I feel sometimes attacked as a white straight man um and it's it's an interesting thing that you know your 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 line to 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 integrate them both and that a perfect li- like a life that's not fucking checked and not challenged that that's the damage that's mm. the problem mm. like it's it's it, it makes a lot of sense to me when you when you speak like this it's it it gives me a, a line through like I don't want to fucking come across as a oh, poor white straight man I understand mm. But, the, you know, there's a humanity to every single person, you know, and when, when anyone feels threatened, um, they, they react back. And my, I, th- I feel like one of the things that this podcast has been set up for is literally me and Kenny to explore really uncomfortable spaces sometimes for us to learn yeah. and listen and hear, challenge back, but also to like, with, it's, it's like our podcast, so it's, it's also about us to a degree and, and there's, there's a certain like innate, um, selfishness to it, but I, I'm really, I'm really, I'm so interested in, in understanding what it feels like to inhabit a different space that is equally as challenging as we're going, like we're going through, like white boys, mm. like it's not a challenging space, but it's challenging because pe- we're being challenged, yeah. and I like being challenged, like it's, like I said, it's so important, but. You're being challenged in this professional space that is is one of um, free speech, free talk, every fucking opinion goes, mm. and yet at the same time you're like, but this is fucking bullshit. Yeah. And there's a But tension. that's also part of free speech as well, though, oh, right? 100%. And that's the other thing as well. It's like uh, if you want to participate in free speech, you can't then be like, but my free speech is more valid than yeah, yours. Exactly. Mm. And I think that's where so much of the fucking discussion goes wrong. It's like everyone's opinion matters, but also mine matters more than X, Y, Z. I think it's also, you know, you see it in the way that people treat like comedians are like, I don't watch the news, I just watch comedy. And it's like, no, you shouldn't fucking do that. Like, yeah. yes, comedians are smart and shit like that, but you still need the news. Like, Some you of them just do dick jokes. Make shit. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And they also make shit up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, and I think that's it. It's just like, I, I don't know. I think... Getting older, I've kind of just realised that I know less than I ever thought I did. Like at yeah. 20, yeah. I fucking thought I had Neither it well. all figured out. And at 30, I'm like, I have no fucking idea about anything. Yeah. And that's fine. And it's about, and that's vulnerability, right? Like yeah. that's, and like what you were saying, Jake, before, like, you know, you're constantly being called in to like question yourself and question the values that you've had. And you, the fact that you can see that, yeah, and you can feel challenged by that, but you don't feel hateful towards it. We enjoy it as people. I think yeah. it's like it's that the whole idea of just not getting upset. I like rarely get upset. I don't know. I, I, I often think about, time. but I often think I'm, about the, I'm, the, I'm the super emotional one. Well, of the two. but some what someone could say to me personally that would make me upset about someone else's opinion. Like I'm not sure. Like the whole idea was like, what if they said fucking go fuck your mother? <laughs> Whatever. It's like I don't know. Like people have their opinion. Like I honestly. Your mum you know, can I go ca- fuck herself, can't But I can't. Nice. You know my mum's. That's not nice. Yeah, she can fuck herself. That's not nice. <laughs> she's not nice, but she I haven't sent her the link yet. Mrs. Though. Graham. I'll send a link to this one. <laughs> Mrs. Graham. Mrs. Graham. She's Mrs. Spear now. <laughs> Mrs. Spear. <laughs> Mrs. Spear. <laughs> But I think uh, what it's is about is like knowing who you are, knowing what you're about, yeah. but also knowing that you don't know what who I the have, fuck you are like, and what you're about. Yeah, like I'm uh, just every day. Like we're on the we're just on the right side of forty, but every day, like is where you are. And like you know, if if there's any word of wisdom, it's like it's only going to get like more. Like it's only going to get it, what you're going through will get expanded from there. Because mm. now, like being thirty, what thirty thirty nine. Um, I still think this, because I'm confronting myself with more information and more people through this and through many other things, mm. I feel like I know less yeah. Yeah. all the time. But I'm not offended by other people's ways of life or opinion. But it's, you know, it, I suppose it's everything starts from a, a tiny nucleus. And it's, you know, if you can do right in your little corner of the world and you know, and think about that and work through those moments. Mm. That's all you can really do. I mean, I've, I've, there's no, I don't want to be a politician. I don't want to like change millions of people's lives. It's, you know, just, just un- for me to understand things better, mm. 
that's where I'm at right now. And then maybe maybe when I'm 74, I'll run for president. <laughs> when yeah. I, just when I should be <laughs> fucking sleeping in a hammock. Just when you're <laughs> smashing Adderall to get onto stage. <laughs> just a lot racking up Adderall backstage like Donald Trump does. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I just... Like, we're in the swamp now talking about fucking uncomfortable shit, but, mm. you know, like, this is literally one of the main reasons, like like I said, we won this podcast, to, to explore these ideas. So, please elucidate us back with some with some shit, like, where you're at. Not, not, not necessarily, like, to respond to our commentary, but, yeah. like, where you're sitting in this space, because it, it, it would be remiss of us to not discuss like the fact that you're on stage at one point and it, and, it, and in a community and in an industry that is renowned for calling out the most un-PC, most difficult yeah. opinions and, and, discuss, and discussing them really openly and vulnerably and also having another role which, you know, you're an active, you're, you're a public figure and you've been reflecting back your own journey yeah. through things. So, like, how, also, how do they interplay? Can I mean, I, can I say one thing? Sorry, I'm not want to interrupt at all. Thank I you d- for apologizing. I, I just, yeah, <laughs> I just, I just want to say that I respect it so much because so many people who say outlandish things kind of nothing to lose. Yeah, and I feel like when when you're talking out about things, you know, you like everything you'd worked for, like you were. At yeah, a point, you had shit to lose. I agree. And yeah. I fucking, I respect that so much. And I, I just mean, wanted to say that before you uh, so divulge. So for me, I think what it is, is um, two years ago almost, um, I got assaulted at my workplace and genuinely thought I was going to die. And I think that the clarity of that has just fucking changed my life in that, and I was literally talking to someone about this last night. Up until that point, I thought I'd done everything right. You know, like I, 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 I was a good girl. I didn't really step out of my lane too much, blah, 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 blah. But none of that changes where it ends up. Like none of that mm. stops you from getting attacked. None of it stops you from thinking you're going to fucking die or whatever. So like in one way, like, yeah, I do have things to lose. But in the other way, I'm like, but I don't. Like, because it's all going to just end anyway. It's so nihilistic, but in a way I no, found yeah. it so well, that's, yeah. freeing, right? So then I was like, well, that's fuck a, it. Like, a, I'm just freedom. Gonna, yeah. It. It's like that That idea of that. It's, yeah, it's Nothing's that, it's that fear of people like wanting, willing to lose their career. But pe- people generally take that step. Yeah. You fucking go fucking sky high or, mm. you know, or you go into another fucking great career and a very happy life doing something else. Yeah. Well, just it, that's it for me. Like it was just like you challenged my in, in my entire sense of who I was and what I wanted and the people that were important to me in that moment just dissipated, and I had yeah. to f- truly figure out like who the fuck I am, what do I want, where do I want to be, like without all these things that I took for granted. And from that, it's just been like, okay, well, yeah, like mm. I'm gonna say shit because like fuck it, I could die tomorrow. Who cares? Like. I don't know. And if people vibe with it, then they vibe with it. If they don't, then they don't. And if change happens, then that's good. And if it doesn't, then nothing ventured, nothing lost. You did, know? You, did you ever, was there moments post um, these moments that you regretted it, even if it was just for like half a day or something? Or have you, have you always felt that this is fucking exactly what I should have always been doing? Um, no, I think I definitely had moments where I was like, fuck, like, my parents have been pulled into stuff. Like people would be like, "Oh, I saw what your so daughter nice. did, and you know why is she saying this? And you guys sh- should have brought it." And like things like that, I'm like, I wish that they weren't pulled into it. Yeah. But also, they know the daughter they raised, so they're like, "Yeah, yeah." Like my dad, who she fucking is. Yeah, my dad put the clash on my entire fucking life. Like if they, and was like, "You need to be listening to the slits. You need to be listening to punk music." So like he knew that this is gonna fucking happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then on the flip side, like my mom, she's like a moldy woman. She like got out of horrific, like abusive cycles. Yeah to create a life for herself. So it's like again, it's like I was raised to be a strong independent a person powerful moment, yeah. who doesn't trust like things and constantly questions and also is used to being alone on a kind of ledge by themselves because yeah. like yeah, like it's hard not to be when you're you know um coming from a background that is so I don't know like when I was um 
in the 90s when we'd go back to New Zealand, like my white dad would have to go into like places by himself first and me, my brother and my mum would hide out in the car because if they saw that there were Maori people coming in, they would be like, oh, no, we're not going to serve you. And just things like that. Like you grow up with that shit. So you grow up knowing like it's a fight. Like you grow up being uncomfortable. I got told the story Mm. by a friend of ours, uh, BT, that the the he was he he's a Melbourneite and he was with the Australian. Now I'm gonna fuck this up, but there were, I'll, I'll 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 use my I edit this. So I'll like I'll put the little thing down the bottom <laughs> of this person. But it, it, it was he was the first Australian of the year, uh, Aboriginal Australian of the year, and um, he went in to go to a bar in St Kilda and was literally just told straight up and down. No, nah, mate. No yeah. blacks in here. Yeah. And the manager was like, this is this guy literally won the Australian of the Year two days ago mm. and wasn't allowed. He's like, nah, nah, mate. Mm. It's, a, it's a fucking wild world. <laughs> like, but it it's like, again, it's like you just know that nothing is certain. You know that you can't come in uh, expecting a level because life constantly changes it up. And I feel like, yeah. you know, they, there's a lot of world, there's a lot of conversation that goes around about, you know, the, the, the huge amount of progress that's been made. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's pretty un- inarguable, but what's forgotten in those conversations, which I find so intolerable, you know, the, the, it's white supremacy via, via a lens of separation, I think, you know, where they're, they, they're, they're claiming, they're making claims to now which there have been, there's still huge inequality, obviously, mm. that, that exists. But they're making claims to now so that versus, you know, acknowledgements of what's happened previously. Yeah. And the trauma doesn't just happen intergenerationally. It happens in, it's happened in this generation. Mm. You've experienced it firsthand. Yeah. And just because you're now an adult at 30 and it may not happen to you, mm. you know, in any fucking par- bar in in New, New Zealand or Australia where it's that fucking that much you know, there's people still living with when it did happen to them yeah now it's a very powerful acknowledgement of oh. fact that that is glossed over one of the things that troubles me the most around the whole conversation around identity and race and is that there is this well there's been so many improvements so, yes like vital improvements. Yeah. We've still got a long way to go. Yeah. But acknowledging the fact we've stepped forward doesn't acknowledge the fact that the trauma felt yeah. still exists. Still acts mm. exist in the mm. hu- in the bodies of the humans. Like I I didn't have a great upbringing. Like I, I had some fucking trauma traumatic experiences in my upbringing and you know, I've been seeing a psychotherapist for the last couple of years and their conversations just like things live in your body. And you feel that, yeah. and I do, and I've, I've, you know, it's so fucking powerful. And there's a, it, it's, it's just such an acknowledgement of um, when you can actually kind of get back to, you know, out of the trauma, out of that space you are now, and acknowledge it. But for anyone to sit around and, and have conversations that are, well, things are getting better, then and that's enough. It's, yeah. it's really, I don't know. There's, there's, I don't quite agree with how far some things get pushed mm. but equally an, a, a lack of acknowledgement of just the bare fact that you grew up mm. <laughs> having experiences like that and that it's not going to have some outworking yeah is insanity but it's also i think people in general are just very uncomfortable with other people's trauma yeah and to acknowledge in the first place that something bad's happened and it still affects you is so hard. And it's like what we're talking about with vulnerability, right? To just say like, hey, here's where I'm at and I'm still really hurt by this is really confronting for people. And I remember just after I got like assaulted and stuff, people were so like, I guess they were just like, oh, but don't worry. Like you're so brave and you're so strong and you'll get through it. And I was like, I don't need you to say that. I just need you to go like, hey, like I can sit with you right now. I can just be there for you. Like, because we all kind of worry that if we say it out loud, it'll trap us in the Uh, moment. 100%. And it's like, no, if we say it out loud, then we can move past it. If we can acknowledge it, then we can move past it. Yeah, I grew up, so I, um, I, as a kid, I was abused sexually and I, there was this, at the time, a very strong, and it's, it exists now, to this "I'm not a victim" conversation. Yeah, and 
something that's been very apparent to me through my 38 years of existence and 32 years, you know, post trauma, is the fact that it's only in the last 12 months, like the, the conversation around you're not a victim robs me of so much yeah. that I need to actually acknowledge, deal with, and go, you know what, I actually am a victim of this. This yeah. happened to me. This is someone else's and you will. you choose this for yourself. For sure. But And I think that, you know, in the, there's a lot of well-meaning in the, you're not a victim, you didn't choose this. But, but the language of you're not a victim is so fucking damaging. Because, you know what, I am a victim of something. Mm. And am I able to move through it? Am I able to be a sit? Can I can I live a great life? With, you know, in spite of you know, and post this, of course. But the but when you're told that you're not a victim of something, mm. when you know, in your fucking in ev- like everybody knows that something's happened, there is something very damaging, and it's to me it feels very much it feels very much like it was. It was very easy for everyone else to just say, you're not a victim, mm. so we can move on. Mm. And leaving me arrested, my development arrested in this moment where it's like, hang on, I need to acknowledge this. Yeah. And I, th- I think that the, the spaces, are very, they're very uncomfortable that we're exploring culturally right now. You know, there is a line where we all need to, you know, you know I, Kenny and I, and you, but you're, you're like one of the most outspoken like you're very comfortable in your opinion and very comfortable to oh, it's sit. Taking me fucking to sit. <laughs> no, but like to, to sit out <laughs> with again, like yeah. any form of familiarity. It, but knowing how hard it is for you to feel like that, someone who's you know the Jake's my dino is is just like fuck off. I'll fucking say whatever the fuck I want. Like, and if Jake feels like that, mm. then how many people in this world are just like? Still cowering, yeah, and I'm like I'm straight adults, white, man. Adults like cowering in the corner, 100%. not dealt with anything, mm. not dealing with anything, not talking about anything, and just it's, like it's all under f- the carpet. It's a fucked up story that other people give you. It's like, well, this is what recovery looks like, so yeah. you need to conform to that. Not like this is what my recovery is, and this is where I'm at. It's this is what we expect of a victim which is that they go through something and then they have a realization and then they get better and then hopefully they you know ga- start a charity or you know yeah, what i mean but like it's, it's kind of games towards everyone else feeling comfortable around it yeah it's every other people feeling comfortable about the trauma yeah rather exactly. than actually ag- acknowledging it Dealing with it, moving you're okay. forward. Yeah, you're okay. You're okay. Yeah, you're okay. Okay, we're okay. Yeah, great. Yeah. We're, we're, it goes you're not a vi- oh. it goes and empowering you with me. You're, you're okay. not a victim. We're it's okay. Like, well, well, you know what? I totally was. <laughs> yeah, literally the day after I got assaulted, someone said to me, "I guess it could have been worse." Uh. And it was like, "Why? Why did you need to say that?" Like, yeah, I guess I could have died. Yeah, was that going to be on my fucking yeah. headstone? Oh, guess it could have been worse. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess I wouldn't have to have this fucking conversation with you if I fucking died. So I guess, yeah, in a way, <laughs> it could have been worse, but also it could have been better. I don't know. I just, yeah, it's it's really, um, it's just really clarified for me who I am. Like, accepting that something really fucked up happened. Just accepting yeah. it. It's so hard. Like, mm. and, and you want to pretend. Like, for so long, I wanted to pretend. Like, nothing happened. I wasn't kind of... But it's just... It's just that when I accepted it, when I sat with it, and when I was like, yeah, this fucking sucks. It fucking sucks that this part of your life doesn't exist anymore. But, on the other hand, I feel like I'm the happiest I've ever been my, that, my it, entire did life. It, did, it, did that open up? That's lovely to hear, by the way. I'm yeah. really glad that, that, you know, I'm not glad that things happened, that, but uh, I'm really glad that you're the happiest you've ever been. Well, I think it's just like pretending is exhausting, right? That's what and, it, you think, and you think mm. that all these things are important, so you pretend to be them, and it's exhausting, so it doesn't make you happy. And then once you're like, well, oh, fuck, yeah. I'm fucked. Who cares? And like, the, it's fine. And <laughs> that that, that, yeah, that, that yeah, idea yeah. of, of a acceptance of that, that, that incident perhaps open up the door to acceptance of all the other shit mm. to acknowledge and accept you know be angry be fucking be whatever the fuck you want to be mm. but just by taking it on board and you know and 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 moving forward yeah. harnessing some of it fucking not harnessing it whatever or talking about it fucking complaining about it joking about it writing like standing in front of a fucking pile of people in Los Angeles telling jokes about it yeah that must be such a freeing thing yeah and and also like it's just made me realize like how fucking potent um, f- 
female anger is. Like people are so uncomfortable with it. It's difficult. Though. Which is like why I think women are so afraid of feeling that. But once you realise it's a fucking superpower, like, I don't know, like when you watch The Handmaid's Tale and they all start fucking stoning one of those people, it's like, that's it, right? Because you, you spend your whole life as a woman like keeping it together, keeping it together, smiling through, smiling through, smiling through, and then there's just these moments where you snap. And it's such a potent thing and it's one thing that I feel like has been conditioned out of people. I feel like uh, anger has been conditioned out of people and and grief and sadness. Like, it's always about, oh, how do you feel better? Like, how do you cure your depression? But it's, it's never about, like, why are you feeling depressed? What has happened to you? Why do you have to run from it? <laughs> I feel like this yeah. got so much deeper. Than this is <laughs> great. Then this is the whole point of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to have people this is on exactly debate. what we expected. This is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, so we, we don't have questions. Like it's I'll send it a but piece, yeah. but. This is, this, these are like we're not doing a podcast to make anybody laugh or anyone think this is literally a convers- This is a, a, f- a, a world in which we can. Kenny and I can literally ask questions that we're really interested in mm. and we're really interested in difficult fucking things about life yeah. because nothing worthwhile is fucking easy. Yes. And we want to fucking do something worthwhile with our time and uh, with, and with, with any whatever platform Fuck. that Doing we... Doing a g- job for minimum wage is not easy. What yeah. about fucking <laughs> self-satisfaction through <laughs> life? Yeah. How fucking hard is that? Yeah. Exactly. I just wish someone at some point in my life was like, hey, it's okay that you're bummed out. Shit's not easy. Like, I just wish. Did you like, never get that? No, I just my, always My dad fucking drilled it into me so hard. Like, that's life, son. It's, it's, it's life. It's, that's life. I had to do the shit. Like yeah. that's life. You're paying. You're helping me pay the rent at fucking age 15. Mm. I got my first job. My mum walked me down at 14 and 10 months. By 14 and 11 months, I was paying fucking board. Yeah, fuck. I was paying board, and my dad that was like, "That's life, son." Mm. I was work. I was working eight hours for forty dollars. I had to pay twenty of it to fucking board. <laughs> I was working for two dollars an hour. <laughs> I'm not shitting you. Still like, paying. But, but you know, <laughs> you know, and this is why I pay my kitchen staff two dollars an hour. <laughs> Fuck them. They need to learn the lessons I learned. Yeah. I used to replace divots. They could sleep on a couch here, but it costs <laughs> 20 bucks. You can sleep in a fucking yeah. egg fuck toilet. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> but it's, um, it's important. It's carpet. But I think for me, it was like growing up, it's like shitty things happen, but you always just had to be like, but that's okay because, you know, other people have it worse and we'll just keep pushing and pushing and compartmentalizing. Yeah. yeah it's and such, I, a p- and such a... I remember like the moments so I was so like, true. yeah, that... that was bad that that this thing that happened is bad so it's I okay think that you feel this bad for me like there's a the, like as a you know as a scottish person there's like there's a such a scottish mentality and i think the weather has got a lot to do with it the weather's just shite so like scotland has this mentality of everything's shite just <laughs> fucking get on with it yeah like it's and it's i mean i'm interested and the fact I'm, that I'm, scotland's been raped the shit out of for <laughs> fucking 500 yeah. years yeah for true <laughs> but but I'm, but I'm kind of watching from afar like watching, you know, Sydney for me is one of like you know a very very liberal, very open. Um, you, you know, it's it's a it's a beautiful city. It's more aware than most cities in this and towns in this world. And I'm watching Scotland from afar, kind of awkwardly get on board. Like they they're still kind of finding it hard to be like. So how do you feel? How the fuck do you feel? Like? <laughs> are, you, are you fucking a bit sad as well? Uh, <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. Oh, this, what it's do you reckon ho- about this English situation? <laughs> uh, it's not yeah. great. Yeah, I was just thinking. The same yeah, thing. I was thinking the same thing. Can we? <laughs> can we like just take some drugs and go and talk about yeah. that for like eight hours? <laughs> yeah, fuck. Yeah. But it's, yeah, but they're not. They're it's they they're, they're leaking in and and I, I watched the lag. But like talking to friends of mine, I watch the lag of, you know, what can cons- what humor consists of changing, what appropriate language is changing. Like it's there's a definite lag, mm. and that's okay. It's fucking it is what it is, and it's but it's everyone's aware. But it's that, that's a very cultural thing. That's a, that's a, like centuries of people just being like, you never complain, you never yeah. go to the doctor, yeah. you don't fucking talk about shit, yeah. you don't fucking think anything's bad. It's just fucking life. Mm. So it's people opening up to like talk about their emotions. Yeah. Imagine a pub full of Scottish cunts in the middle of fucking Glasgow just sitting there and be like, I'll tell you what, tell you what, Jimmy. <laughs> been feeling really <laughs> depressed recently. <laughs> <laughs> and it's me going, fucking, I've been wishing you say that for a long time. <laughs> I've been watching you be so sad and I'm just wondering, I'm worried for you, son. I'm worried for you. Like, what a beautiful moment that would be. Fuck. Yeah, I remember talking to my therapist and, she was. I was like, yeah, you know, like, 
I, you know, like everyone's important, but you know, it's just not me. And she's like, why? And I'm like, uh, I don't know, because what do I fucking do? What do I fucking contribute? And she's like, no, you don't need to contribute anything. You you can just exist and that's fine. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm sorry, pardon yeah. me? I can just be? That's <laughs> what? No, no. Yeah. And I just Rewind. Fucking <laughs> and making people uncomfortable is a part of being authentic. Mm. Mm. Like authenticity is bound to bring c- uncomfortable moments. Mm. You know, like I think, you know, just – you know, zooming in on the micro. If you're uncomfortable, if you are being vulnerable and, and being authentic, it's going to cause problems within any marriage. You know, it's going to cause any relation, you know, problems within any business partnership. It's going to cause problems with any friendship. But when you're existing so publicly like you do, it's going to cause other things on top of that. Mm. Uh, to to a degree that, you know, that is it's so un- it's so unfairly uncomfortable. Because it's kind of the, the two things should be separate, but also within your line of work, they're kind of the same thing. Yeah, I think, but also it's again it's that thing of like, well, I also just don't fucking care if you don't like me. And where did that come from? The the where, where did it grow from? I'm gonna go for a wee. Okay, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Um, where did that come from? I guess I don't know. You grow up being bullied, and and people don't like. Were you, you. bullied? Yeah, yeah, fair bit. Same. And you grow up and you're like, okay, well, I can see all the reasons why I'm not a good person. And then you think that you're worse than other people for so long. And then you realise, oh, everyone's shit. So, like, if yeah. someone comes if someone comes to you, you're like, well, I already know that you're a hypocrite. So I'm not going to take this on board because mm. I, know, I know exactly how I'm a bad person, but I know exactly how I'm a good person as well. I don't know. Do you feel that? I, I wear the 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 idea of hypocrisy um, lightly and and with weight at the same time I I am I'm an imperfect person I I very much know that I've been a far more imperfect person in my past um, than I am now I'm working on it constantly to try to integrate my all of my behaviors so that there's a lack of hypocrisy mm-hmm. um, so that what you see is truly what you really get. Um, it's it's, but uh, within it, I, I think the statement that everyone's a uh, hypocrite is so true. Uh, the, the 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 ultimate goal of life, I think, should be to eradicate hypocrisy. Mm. But that's a that's something that is it's really gifted to a very few amount of people who are so lucky mm. that they are able to control things like uh, their income. Um, you know the ability to to speak openly without risk of and fear of, uh, you know, uh, uh, economic or social failure and 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 disintegration, and it it falls to certain people who have been lucky enough to create something on the back of of the idea of not being a hypocrite and being mm. able to speak truth or, or, or speak just speak just have a platform yeah whether or not they're speaking truth you know like fuck Donald Trump's got a huge platform. But he, you know that he's not speaking truth. Yeah. You know he's he's not even being a hypocrite. He's just he's just such a fucking fraudulent <laughs> human. But uh, you know, uh, there's so there's that there's these worlds that that exist. Uh, I just I feel I'm good. I'm good. I, I feel so incredibly lucky for the uh, opportunity to have built whatever world I've built where I feel less fear of being who I am. Mm. That I know. That people with the same opinions and who, who are more erudite and have, have uh, they're, they're far more they're far more inter- interesting than I do I am, but you know they they can't speak clearly they can't dress the way that they want to dress because their whole there's a part of their world that is just tied to a behaviour. Yeah, and it's a hell of a thing. If you've got, especially when you throw kids in the mix, asking people to step outside of uh, of a comfortable space because of what they think is right, as opposed to what is going to keep their children safe, it's a it's a difficult world to traverse. Mm. I like I feel if, uh, extremely lucky for having you on and being able to go, hey, I'm a white boy and I feel uncomfortable with certain things. Like, what a fucking privileged space! I not you know to forget. If we can, for a minute, the fact of whatever we look like and uh, and we are gender wise, just I feel in, uh, extremely privileged just to be able to ask the question, regardless of all these things, mm. because uh, and it's a 
I don't know. Like it's it's something that I th- I feel like with that privilege of luck and timing and and genetics, that there's something rattling around in me that goes well. You literally owe it to yourself and to everyone else who doesn't have this opportunity to really explore and push yourself into uncomfortable territory. Mm. I really thank you for actually sitting with us and, and going where we've gone tonight and um, the, your willingness to do it because this, this is, is a real not desire the podcast with us. I expected, but I'm fucking <laughs> yeah. loving it. Are you okay? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's fucking great. And you guys, you've been so vulnerable, and you've been so vulnerable, and and um, yeah, it's fucking freeing. Like, it's just nice to be in a room full of people who are like. I guess what everyone wants is just to be like, this is my tr- the truth of me in like my flaws and my things and and i think that's what everyone wants but the reality of that is that some people will not like that truth so you know how you take that on can be either really damaging yeah or i think where people's resilience and strength comes in is to go i already know that people won't like that but i'm still gonna exist that way anyway it's a it's a lesson i think you have you have to get beaten by it by a bit and We haven't really touched on that this too much, but it's probably such a huge part of everything we spoke about, like the the influence of social media, and when we when we opened Marys and stuff, and you know, right right in that time on Instagram shit it was two thousand thirteen, so Instagram shit's just coming out. Um, it was the pop 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 for us, but there was yeah, but there was it was like you know social commentary online or like reviews like reviews online all that shit and. Used to, we used to get so upset mm. when people would be like, oh, it was fucking shit Which or whatever. Which is understandable because it was a new language. Yeah. It was a new thing to be able to just publicly criticise someone without any fucking... Yeah, and because, and you know, as we touched on, like, it was such a personal thing for us. Mm. You know, and that, I know we was, was sort of brazen about it earlier, and it is their opinion, but it doesn't mean that you don't have those moments when you look at it and you read it and be like, Jake and I would just be like, what, fuck... Why the fuck? Like, we'd, if we read really bad things, it would, like, it would sit with us all night at the mm. start. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I don't give a fuck. I tell you, we did one thing, um, and we're gonna, we have to re, we're gonna start redoing it. And it was, it was for our industry as much as anything else. And it was just going on uh, Instagram and reading out of the worst reviews. It was like Mary's reads bad. Like, it's like, like celebrities read mean tweets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically that. And it's just like Mary's reads bad reviews. So we read out all of our one star reviews. And the the sort of the the loving sort of language that we got from the industry that followed us on Instagram was fucking perfect. It's all we needed. And from that moment on, we're just like, fuck, we just own it now. Yeah. Like we own that. We we own the narrative about your dumb commentary. Yeah. It's like, so say what you want. We'll just read it out. Yeah. Like unless you've got, and there was some of it was so. I mean, we didn't read out these ones. But some of them were so specific about specific members of staff. Like we had we had um. This Swedish dude, I'm sure she won't mind talking about it. Like he started as Maximilian mm-hmm. and left as Ada and transgender that through the whole process. One of the fucking most beautiful people we'd ever met. And was like the first but the first two weeks we opened Mary's, Max would turn up on a skateboard and be like, Oh, apply for a job, any jobs yet? And we're like, Fuck, he just kept turning up and we're like, Fuck, I love you and then you know, but there'd be specific commentary about, you know, who's that dude in a dress? Like, what a fuck like just like, you know, Name it's calling, the specific shit you're just that's like the fuck most off. As well. Yeah, and we wouldn't read that out because that's not fair to to Ada, or whatever. But it's like that idea of just like, hey, the fuck, the fuck do you people think you are mm. to go on fucking anyone's fucking like social platform? Yeah. and be a fucking schoolyard bully. Like, do you find fuck that off. the criticism that hurts the most is the one that you kind of already know? Like oh, for sure. When you're like, fuck, I... I the burger I wasn't I as really good as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. We're like, we fucking knew. We did it. That's you, <laughs> you thought you were hiding it? And then someone's like, oh, but well, it, you know. But that and it happens you. in reviews. Like That teaches you because you're like, if I'm ever unsure again, I mm. fucking should not. I fucking know. I, think yeah, yeah, yeah. Know not to I know it. I just jumped in, uh, you know, uh, when there was. But, I th- you know, the, the answer to that question and then to talk about reviews, mm-hmm. they're two different things. Like a review is someone's professional opinion hopefully or maybe someone's given a fucking two-bit comment on youtube about a stand-up thing you've done Mm. but then when you get social media it's so different like the the review the social media review like the 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 commentary versus a review yeah just like if someone's gonna go up and go and critique my professional work it's one thing Mm. (laughs) but if someone's just gonna go that guy's fucking fat yeah yeah it's a completely different comment i know i'm fat 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I'm not fat, fat, but I'm fat enough to wheeze after sex. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But, <laughs> but also post pandemic, who isn't wheezing? Yeah. <laughs> but like it hurts a bit. But like, at least you want to one. have sex, Jake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. massive brag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the humble brag, dude. Yeah. The 2020 humble brag. Yeah. Me, me, I had sex once me, a fucking wife, fortnight. Me, my, my wife's like just fucking just so ashamed right now. <laughs> she still has sex with him, but. Um, the, she but just the, tweeted, but the, I have not slept yeah. with that man since <laughs> yeah. the breath of spite. This isn't even live. I deny these <laughs> allegations. Yes. 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 was the last time. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea of like a review is like, I, 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 like we've been reviewed. So we've got something in common. Our restaurants, our venues have been remo- reviewed by professional things. They hurt. You can take them <clears throat> positively or negatively, however you respond. They're their mm. own thing. Mm-hmm. But social media commentary... It's just a different fucking world. It's just nothing to do with you. And it's no. funny because you read it and you're like, uh, this literally is all about you, you absolute fucking yeah. nuts. Yeah, how good is that? It's yeah. adults acting like 11-year-olds the whole time. Like, yeah. We used to it's get, like, Jake, um, I think it's one of the times in big decisions and Jake's like, I'm off it. Because we'd, we'd done a, I think it was like, fuck, it was Anzac Day. And we'd done like a, a we had the CBD shop and we'd done this like Anzac biscuit milkshake, whatever. And these dickheads were like, yeah, great way to show a fucking thing for the, all the people that died like, doing a fucking milkshake. We're like, mm. like surely anything that is celebratory in this moment. We didn't moment create is, the biscuit, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's, everyone's it's, enjoyed Anzac biscuits. They just started yeah. like laying it, like just people that, they don't care. They no. don't give a fuck. They're just and talking shit. it doesn't shit. change their life at all. It's not like your fucking no, shake is going to ruin their it day. Made yeah. their, it made their fucking week or month because mm. it was like they t- started tagging their mates and there was like three or four people like, this is like we've, there's been attempts to cancel us and uh, like for different reasons. We're getting to a different podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, they're, we're, uh, the cancel cast. Sweet, oh, little, fuck. sweet little baby we're, Jesus. We've we got in trouble. We got in trouble for fucking putting up pictures of Jesus and. You know, and for having, fe- God forbid, having female artists doing work that's their own. Mm. We've had that and they've been shouted down by uh, by female artists doing shit that other females find offensive. It's like, oh, okay. But anyway, but like when you come up against it where, you know, people are just being fucking mean, it's a different world, but you exist in it in a place that we don't. Like we're literally, we are almost to a point like we're a brand, that, you know, the, what we put out there is... It, it, you know, uh, you know, as a brand, it's 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 less about us. It's more about what the product, mm-hmm. and the, the kind of beauty of the podcast is that we actually can we're, we're exploring a different a realm of it, a different vibe of it. But your whole your whole thing is, is in your whole persona as a as a public persona is literally a lot of it held on social media and. So <laughs> You must see yeah, but then and it's feel also the like, most heinous shit. Oh, yeah, 100%. It, but also social media is not real. Like I just know that and I feel like I'm lucky in that I did exist pre-social media for yeah. a, a, a fair bit of my life. Right. I feel like if I grew up Because it's real life to a lot of people. Yeah, and I, I feel like if I grew up now, if I was a teenager now, I would be so fucked up by it. But I'm lucky in that my teenage years where I didn't know how to do my fucking makeup and all that shit is just gone in the fucking ether. Like, <laughs> yeah. like teens on Instagram now, ha- like they have to look good. And I look at that and I'm like, oh my God, like I was a, I was allowed to be awkward and uncomfortable. Well, they learned it all from YouTube as well. Exactly. That's the only reason they fucking know how to do anything. Yeah. But again, like YouTube was so new to me growing up. So I feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think... So much of social media for me, it's like, yeah, people are pretty heinous, but also, like, it's not real and I can just delete it. <laughs> it's a, you know, and that's it's a really a powerful place to get to. And I think it's a message that needs to be heard by so many more people. Uh, the, you know, I agree. Like, I quit social media because I I just – I'm an all-in or nothing guy. And, mm. and, I, and, again, to hark back to how lucky I am, mm. I literally have a brand – I have a brand of uh, the business I believe in is a brand. The thing that I work on every day is a brand. That's not me. Mm. So me disappearing as a human, as an individual, it disappears. Yeah. I, I went away. I got the. I got actually got the choice to go. I do not need this for my professional development. And 
and I feel like so many people don't realize like fuck maybe you should get off Twitter like it's, <laughs> it's not in that it's bad but you're just like man you don't need this and the more you're not. on it do like, you feel like that because I, I there I, are definitely people I've been like babe get off oh Twitter. yeah I agree with that you <laughs> don't need to be yeah, on Twitter yeah. like you should I have stop a doing fucking cookies and getting on Twitter yeah. oh I just I have a friend and he, <laughs> and and they're gorgeous they're beautiful they're an actor they're very very beautiful and I'm like you don't need to be on Twitter because you're beautiful. Like, yeah, be on Instagram is, only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be on Instagram. No one cares about what you yeah. sound like. It's but the radio of fucking no one cares social media. About, no one cares <laughs> about your heart or your voice. I only yeah. care about your pecs. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, honestly, I'm like, you don't need to try and do jokes. You don't need to try and like sell these messages. Like, get off this format that does not serve you. And it's like, for me on Twitter, like, I deleted my Twitter because I was like, fuck, wait, why am I on this? Like, Give it's a way. battleground. It's oh. a cesspit, Twitter. It's a cesspit. It's also you like. You gotta be on it. You gotta be consistent. If you're on conversing. it, if you're gonna yeah. make it work, otherwise you've gotta you get be run fucking over. there. But don't yeah. you fucking get sick of comedians being like, oh, here's a serious tweet about politics? It's like, fuck off. Like, I don't care yeah, I what some, like, absolute fuckhead who, like, probably vomits. Yeah, I, on I think one the most night. things. I don't give a shit what mo- a musician says about who they fucking exactly. vote for. Exactly. So I'm like, like just get off. You, like, li- you live in a different realm. Like, yeah. This yeah. is, I think this is the genius of where, you know, like Dave Chappelle crosses over and can comment around, you know, his <laughs> joke. Oh, oh, fucking get way. into yeah, it. of course. <laughs> that we was a 400 mil uh, bottle for yeah. the 11 um, years P- ago. P.S. Not P- finished P- yet. Oh, it's not? <laughs> no, in oh, your glass. Oh, it's in my glass still. Yeah. No, no, have you been there? It, it's yes. It's very good. It's, yeah. you know, like. Plug. It wasn't even a plug. It was just. P and V wines of Enmore. Piss Delicious. And vinegar. Piss is that in. what it is? Yeah. Because yeah. so every time I was literally talking to my housemate about this, I was like, P and V just is penis and vagina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> an American thing. Is, they say, but, but one of, Louise, who we're business partners with, she was like, we're talking, with every business we've ever had, there's a really awkward conversation about what do you call it? Mary's is called, goes on Mary Street. Because mm-hmm. every name we came up with sucks. Mm-hmm. And then P and V, like, we were talking about, and Louise was like, never oh, renamed fuck. anything else. Yeah, she was like, oh, fuck, it just, like, it's so awkward. I just I wish we could just call it Piss and Vinegar. It was an old punk song that she loved. So they just called it Piss and Vinegar. And I was like, That's we, great we, look, why don't we just say P and V Merchants? And it's like, it sounds fucking pro, merchants but we know what it is. Yeah, yeah. We all know what it is. It's but been its I, fucking natural wines. It's Piss and Vinegar. Kenny, Kenny's playing a game here that that is, it's true in what, the end result was, but we, if we could have got piss and vinegar by the liquor licensing, yeah. we would have named it piss and vinegar. We knew. I would have put stocks in that company. We, yeah, hundred, we, we, knew, we wanted to call it, like Louise came, well, I want to call it piss and vinegar. And Kenny and I, like, surprise, surprise, we were the sensible voices in the conversation and in that room going, we'll never get that by, that's literally 25 grand down the fucking toilet. So we get, to come back to this point and come up with something that we all know will make us fucking happy. But, and that, that's where PV came from. It was like, we the knew. Jo- the secret joke. I was, yeah. But well, the penis and the vagina, one. yeah. It was like, it was the, that's it was the double. Fucking, that's a two birds, one fucking stone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every time I'm like, point or some vagina. We do it all the time as well. We say it all the time. It's a fucking, you know what? It's a good fucking store. And it's a fucking great wine. Um, but look, I don't know where we're going to go from here. I, I'm kind of talked yeah, out. I think we've done a lot. Well, I mean, we've yeah, done we've a lot. We've a lot of bases. Well, we haven't covered everything. I feel like there's some shit we need to continue to talk about, but it's probably meant for another day. Just do it in dot points. I'll give you five word answers. Can you give us a, can, actually, can you just do it all on social media tomorrow? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When we start posting it, you'll be like, and Here's by the way. Here's my road map to Palestine <laughs> <laughs> as a 10 second reel on Instagram. Because <laughs> yeah. as a stand up comedian, yeah. I got an insight, motherfucker. I know exactly I know what, what I'm talking about. That's oh, really good. man. The world's on fire, though, right? Are we it's feeling? Like, are we feeling hopeful about the future? We're we feeling I think, fucking crazy. Oh, never more. I won't speak from. I've actually well, never I think we're both very positive hopeful. people. I've never felt more hopeful in the last two years. There's, really? Well, because yeah, the world, because things will never change without a serious recalibration. Mm-hmm. And COVID is like we've touched on it a few times, like you know, within your industry specifically, like the uh, humbleness. 
So it's like a, a humbling of the entire fucking world. Mm. And a lot of the bullshit that was peripheral that, you know, like in every industry, fucking comedians, musicians, insurance, fucking everything, they're all going to fuck off because their businesses weren't built. They were built. They were fucking sandcastles in the fucking beach. The, fu- the anyway, future has so been born into stark nice. relief. It's being brought right it'll into get, our fucking well, backyard. Get the, the, pe- the, the, the people that exist or will continue to exist are the people that fucking deeply care about what they're doing. Mm. So that's we're a kind of nice place to reset back to. So we I just we hope that that's like we can sort of we also touch on the fact that the um, you know the world's got a very fucking short memory and we've been through world wars and all these things and everything that we promised we'd never do again fucking happen again. But you know, I we're 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 etern- I think we're both eternal optimists and see this as a really beautiful thing because we were just we were chugging on a train to fuck knows where like just doing the usual things like even like i don't know, know, i don't believe in the future that we had pre covid at all no I, it's, I, it's now i now i see the galilee basin mining being under like being undermined not by a government which i have no faith in and certainly not in the free market but by insurance company well not in the free market in the sense of like people with vested interests like you know the adani mine but where the insurance companies are going well actually We've done our forward modelling based on where things are going b- with COVID and we're saying we will not insure you. Mm. And the fact that we've got insurance companies being coming to the rescue of Australia's fucking ecological and and therefore fucking human health. We were talking that, before you arrived about China's sort of commitment to like zero emissions by 2060. Like, it's, it, yeah. it's like there's fucking things happening that you never thought would happen. It's true. Yeah. So yeah. that's fucking, I, we're, I, we're, we're, we're on board. I feel like we were leaking towards a disaster and there might have been something that's arrested. And one thing that we're really passionately invo- uh, engaged with emotionally and mentally is the fact that we can rewrite this shit. And we can actually be a part of having conversations and talking and discovering a new way forward. Mm. And that that's so – it's a powerful idea that all of a sudden things get thrown into such um, depths of, of – um, of, uh, like they, it's just so fucking – it's crazy to a degree. You'd never imagine it. And then you need to imagine your way back out. And that's where the creative mind gets engaged. And I'm like, well, now we've got a proper opportunity to reshape what we were falling into. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, <laughs> cheers, cheers to fucking that. Yeah, cheers to fucking that. To hey, fucking Jen Fricker. Cheers. Jen Fricker, it's been a so fucking much. huge been joy to have you on the podcast. Oh. Um, uh, it, you're welcome back anytime. We'd actually really love to have you back to continue to help us explore some uncomfortable conversations that we've got going on in us because you're just. Uh, you're, you're it was just hugely enjoyable. Thank you so you're much. You're just so empathetic and, fucking, so and caring. And a fucking yeah. sick jacket as well. Oh, I, really like <laughs> I, gotta pay, sick jacket. I bought I pay this during pay. the week I was in Brisbane for my one fucking week at comedy <laughs> festival. I was like, this is going to be a good year. Is that when you're going to be an international DJ? <laughs> yeah. <I'm really> <laughs> <laughs> Me and Jake are starting a duo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. We're leaving you in the fucking yeah. dirt, son. Yeah. Yeah. Ciao for now, Kenny oh, Graham. I'll be your manager. Yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah. give a lot of people yeah, talking shit on my cigarette butts <laughs> on this floor. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for being here, everybody. And if anyone's listened the whole way through, go fuck yourself. <laughs>